Hey everybody, welcome to WordPress on the Let's go WordPress website. I'm going to go ahead and uh, <laughs> mute everybody for now. And uh, we're going to do a little bit of introduction of this meetup. Um, this is a monthly meetup where we get together. Uh, we've been doing this virtually now for several uh, months and uh, seems to be working out pretty well. Um, this is a monthly event that happens on the usually the third Tuesday of every month. Um, there's usually no conflicts with any kind of holidays or anything like that usually. So um, that's why we chose third Tuesday of every month. Um, the meetup is uh, sponsored by weglot.com. Weglot is a multilingual plugin uh, and service, web-based service that uh, supports multiple languages for your WordPress site, as well as any other um, uh, website of any other technology. So uh, Weglot offers 15% off uh, their services. And if, you, if you're interested, go to the wptoronto.com and check out their package and sign up and uh, give it a try for free. Um, and um, if you're interested at the end of the uh, meetup, I'll do a little demo of the product so you guys can see what it's all about if we have time. If we run out of questions, which we, I, I doubt we'll do. Um, so this month we are actually using our new uh, Zoom account, which is courtesy of uh, Weglot. We now have uh, our own uh, Zoom account that organizers can use and we'll um, be able to have other WordPress Toronto organizers use an unlimited Zoom account with re recording in the cloud and stuff like that. And so that I can hand off the, the, the baton to other people if they'd like to host this meetup quite easily now. Um, so that's news for this month. Um, the, one, the way this meetup normally goes is that we uh, have questions uh, on the meetup site. Uh, and we, I'll share my screen and then we usually um, ask them in order that they were posted. Uh, and then after that, we'll uh, start uh, taking, uh, once we get through those, we'll start taking the questions from the audience, people that didn't post something. So that is usually how this all goes. Now, uh, as a courtesy, uh, when we have a lot of people on, on a call like we do right now, we have 18 people, I usually mute everybody and then people unmute themselves by hitting the space bar or just using the um, mute, unmute button on Zoom. If you've never used Zoom before, by the time you come to some of these meetings, you're gonna be very, very capable with Zoom. So, um, uh, but if you have used it before, you know how annoying it is when people have dogs barking in the background or uh, so, you, know, you have a side conversation and you don't realize you're being broadcast to 18 other people. We might be talking about something and it's, uh, it's, it's best to mute. So that's why I muted everybody so that um, uh, when people want to speak, they can unmute and I'll, I'll go ahead and probably unmute shortly just to see if there's any background noise and see if it works out okay. So without any further ado, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, actually I'll ask you all to unmute. So you can go ahead and unmute. We're gonna go to the first question, which is from Jacinta. Jacinta, are you here? Are you in the meetup? Uh, I don't actually see Jacinta on our list of people that have attended. That's too bad. I'll read her question. It's a fairly uh, deep question. <laughs> uh, I'll share my screen as well so you guys could see the meetup. Um, Jacinta asked, does anybody know how to make a third party website open in your own websites window without the URL showing that you actually went to a different site? Masking the URL of a third party site. So before I even go to this question, this is a highly, highly unusual thing to do. Now, uh, if it's, when you say third party, um, is it your own site that you wanna do this or actually another site? Because if it's a site that is not controlled or owned by you, um, this isn't necessarily illegal but it is definitely bad etiquette. Uh, it's, uh, um, you're, you're gonna get a lawsuit on your hands probably if your site gets any traffic eventually because you're essentially commandeering somebody else's content without permission. Now, I, you didn't state whether you got permission to do this or not, uh, but everybody's website is essentially intellectual property for that person that's running the site or the company that's running the site. Imagine if I started amazon.xyz and basically started putting Amazon site in there and then somehow masked orders being coming in from Amazon and took them myself and then placed them on Amazon and took a cut of that. 
I don't think Amazon would appreciate that, right? So, um, um, so that's what happened. So, so that's not a great thing. Um, but the rest of this question here, um, yeah, it's definitely a misrepresentation for sure. Uh, but there are different ways of actually um, uh, introducing this content. And if you were here, we could talk about it. But since you're not here, probably not a good use of time. So there's lots of different ways of introducing content from third party sites but we're not gonna talk about it since you're not here. And then Dan here put some information using, this is the technical solution using an iframe, uh, but again, technical and the business imp uh, implications are very different. And Robin provided some other good tips for you here. Okay, we're gonna go to the next one. So Paul, Paul, are you there? Paul Warner? Yeah, yes, I am. But hey, uh, we, we've already fixed this one. Ah. I, 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 I tried to recreate the error uh, at, at Dan's suggestion. Mm -hmm. And what I did, I didn't happen. It didn't happen. So what I'm guessing is that when it, when the problem did happen, where stuff would be center aligned, especially lists, which looked crazy and, and shouldn't have been center aligned. It had something probably to do with, uh, with text that I had cut and paste from somewhere else. That's a very common problem. Yeah. In Gutenberg, if you copy and paste, so, so there's this workflow that people take. And honestly, this workflow is one of these, what I call anti patterns, which is I've seen something on my screen, I want to put on my website, I want it to look exactly the same, and just copy and paste it. It's like the worst possible thing you can possibly do to do that. It's not, it's not something that um, I only say that not because it's not, not because it's like necessarily evil in a sense, but Unfortunately, the, the internet does not abide by the rules of Microsoft Word. As much as Microsoft would like it to be, you know, completely seamless, they introduced an expectation that's wholly inaccurate. And so when you see a piece of content on a web page or on a browser or something, or Microsoft Word, and you expect it to look exactly like that, I urge you not to do that. Anybody, no matter whether you're using Gutenberg or anything else. Because the reality is that you have to recreate it, right? And you have, to, you have to create it using the tools and systems that are built into your system. And which usually means you strip all the formatting out by pasting it into something like Notepad and then recreate it the way you want it to. As much as you'd like it to look exactly the same way, you're gonna spend much more time trying to fix it than just copying, than just recreating it from scratch or just stripping the formatting, taking the graphics. It takes longer time, but um, than just copying and pasting and hoping that it works but it's definitely not a solution. Um, by the way, I've seen um, weird formatting in, in the block editor where you put like bulleted lists and I've seen situations where it, in the preview, in the actual editor, it doesn't look right. But then when I saved it, it looks correct. And so I've seen actually that, and that's different. That's actually just a, a quirk in the block editor for the whatever block you're using. So anybody else have any insights or inputs on, input on this? So. Yeah, uh, Alex, I am. Um can add to it that I have had a lot of experience uh, um, preparing content, HTML content, displaying it in a browser, copying it as rich text, pasting it into a post, uh, you know, content area, and having it quite faithfully rendered. Uh, bear in mind, though, that knowing what can go wrong, I keep the, the text formatting and layout relatively simple and restrict myself to maybe eight or 10 different HTML elements uh, to minimize the likelihood of something going wrong. But it, once you figure out which applications can faithfully, you can faithfully render their content in, uh, in WordPress. Uh, and then the other point is that WordPress core, uh, there've been a lot of efforts made to make the Word, Microsoft Word conversion work smoothly. And I haven't used it to any significant extent, but from what I've seen, um, other people using it, it seems to work quite well because they put some serious effort into doing that. And I think that just reflects the fact that so many people, you know, work in Microsoft Office products that it's really a sort of a defensive maneuver as much as anything else on Microsoft's part. I, I, I do have a, a one question about uh, what you said about, about uh, stripping the uh, uh, what is it? Stripping the styles out of the out of the uh, out of the text, uh, and and this this copying that I'm doing is totally legitimate. It's a it's a nonprofit site, 
and uh, another colleague does a weekly email newsletter about what's happening at the farmer's market at Montgomery's Inn. And, uh, and then I take the same content and put it in a, in a blog post uh, on, on, on the website that is for Montgomery's Inn. But there's a number of hyperlinks in it. And if I, if I just put it into text and, and then copy it, I'll lose all the hyperlinks, won't I? Uh, so the question is, how can I strip out all of the other stuff and, and leave the hyperlinks uh, intact? Or do I have to recreate those all manually? Well, I can't say off the top of my head which tool I know for sure does that, but uh, normally the tools that can be used to strip the formatting from text to give you just plain ASCII text uh, are smart enough to figure out that a URL is not something to convert because the, um, um, the HTML element is not formatting. Uh, but rather the construction of the object itself. Um, just trying to think of, I, I can't think of off the top of my head how I work around that because I, I add the links to an existing text rather than convert a text that has them in it. But uh, there, you search for tools that do conversions which involve stripping formatting and see if you can find one that will leave the um, URLs intact. Yeah. Okay, thank um, you very much. Yeah, I mean, when, when you copy and paste into like Notepad, it will strip the URLs out for sure. Um, there are some there are some editors that like are minimal editors that keep the HTML. Like I think on the Mac, the Notes app, believe it or not, I think kind of keeps the URL somehow. I'm not sure exactly what they do it, but it's really an all or nothing situation, right? Even if, even the URLs themselves, when you copy and paste them, could have encoding that is unwanted. For example. One would be the links are encoded to open it in a new window. And you might want that, you might not. And so if you copy and paste with the formatting and you copy, you're, you're not, it's not you're copying the formatting, by the way, you're copying the code of the source material. That's really what you're copying. And so think about what's happening. Like you're copying the code, styles, style, potentially some embedded style sheets, JavaScript code potentially, really you don't know what you're copying, right? And so then you're, and then you're pasting it into a window in WordPress that's gonna try to interpret that. So like, for example, I've seen the block editor take paragraphs out of a Word file and then you reintroduce multiple paragraphs correctly. And in some cases, add a bunch of extra paragraphs that are not necessary because they were in their original source file. So I think that the, the idea of actually taking content from another place and putting it into your site, you might want to consider the alternative, which is if your original content is hyperlinkable to begin with, that is to say, let's say it's an email newsletter and you can, and you can point to a web version of that, then why copy it? Why don't you just link to that web version of the newsletter altogether from like a newsletter center? Or some people, what they've done is they've actually created a PDF of that newsletter and then just upload the PDF file, for example. The PDF then it renders it exactly how it was before without having to worry about that. So there are like, there's a couple of different approaches to doing this, which kind of gets around the notion of kind of recreating the newsletter inside of your web page. Um, Alex, I just found a um, service, an online service called Text Cleaner uh, with an, just an R at the end, not E-R, uh, as in textcleaner.com. And um, it strips a variety of things from a text but I see here that there's a setting to leave URLs intact. So that might be, and also there's a setting here specific to MS Word characters as well. So that might assist someone who wants to move a text from one source to a new one. I'll put um, the link in the notes. I just have something else to say there. Can people hear me? Yeah, please Okay, hi Alex. Um, so there is a button, a button, at least in the classic editor anyways, it's like an eraser button and it does strip out, the big problem is span style. Um, it does strip that out. So when you copy it in, that's always worth a try and that does leave the URLs in there. The other thing is um, with PDFs, I've just, uh, I mean, this has been going on since 2001, I didn't know, but Google will index the PDF. So if you are considering putting it on a web page, um, 
you're basically duplicating this PDF and having a web page. Um, I looked up Yoast and the Yoast guy said, you can't tell behavior when you've got it in a PDF. So I think I would recommend um, these alternate methods of trying to clean up the code and getting it into a page. So you can see if anyone's even looking at the page. Um, otherwise, yeah, you're just duplicating a lot of work. You could just upload it so the PDF. But Heather, thank you. That's a, that's a great suggestion. Let's let's actually look at that a little bit. Um, these these techniques that Heather just talked about. Um, so like um, so you're saying that when you add a new page, let's say for example, I'm in, I'm in the back end of the wptoronto.com website right now. Yeah. <clears throat> some, some people coming late a little bit, so I'm just admitting them here. Um. So yeah, this is like the new little splash screen introduction in, Word, in WordPress 5.5, I think they introduced. Yeah. Um, nice little, nice little intro. If you've never gone through this, it's actually quite. Don't don't click the X. Actually go through this, because they've made some really neat changes recently in 5.5 that I really like. But in any case, so like this is a website that has Beaver Builder installed. So right here, this is an experience that not all of you will see, right? Because what there's what what's happening here is that. You've got Beaver Builder saying, you know, maybe you should use me instead of the block the block editor. And uh, me personally, I I really don't like this. Like, I think this should if this should be like an, another way to do this. But in any case, I'm going to use the standard editor, which is actually the block editor. That's what it should say. Use the block editor. Um, and so here is where, if I were to like, let me just I don't know. I'm gonna. Let me just open another. I'm, I'm going to open another uh, web page. Let's say. Let's say I wanted to po copy Paul's uh, content here into a web page, right? And I just popped it in, did a copy and paste. You know, interestingly enough, it does a pretty decent job of that. It looks like Paul is hyperlinked, which is great, and this looks okay. Right? So it looks like some of that content didn't have that much. Extra. That's one of, yeah, that's one of the improvements that they tried to make with the block editor to strip mm -hmm. out unnecessary code. Mm -hmm. But if anyone's still, I'm not sure if that person. Well, if I, if I look at the HTML, it is really simple HTML. I mean, it's not, you know, it can't be any simpler. So, so certain web pages um, uh, are you know, quite straightforward, right? There's others that are not, right? Let's say if I go into a Google Doc, right? And I copy this marked up piece of text here and I try to put this in here. Uh, let's say I just hit return, I, I paste that. Um, not bad. So Google Docs seems to be okay. So, you know, we're pointing all our fingers at Microsoft Office, basically, right? And you look at Word Doc and they have the whole styles and you have the span and all that stuff. But again, it, you might be okay. The issue is that you just can't tell. In a, in a MailChimp newsletter, especially if you have graphics and stuff and you select it, it's possible that the formatting will not be okay. It's possible that certain things will be off. And so you, you have to deal with them individually. So it's really a trade-off. It's like, you know, maybe take it in pieces maybe and then see how much of it goes, goes properly and see if it's good enough, so to speak, right? That's another approach, so. Alex, if you take the text from one document and that text is not like some special fonts, let's say, or some special characters, colors, I think at that point you will have some weird uh, stuff that will be coming out of yeah, I mean, like, yeah, so, yeah, so, if, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking one of these, like, here's a template, right? I mean, yeah. I don't know if you, how often you do this, but, like, let's say here's some, this is, this is using a font, right? Let's say you had a font here, and you applied Arial Black, or so, so you're going to try to, let's say you're going to copy this content into your editor here. Let's see what happens. Well, interestingly enough, this is not what used to happen. This is actually much better. It's stripped all that content. So, it appears to be doing a better job, right? If you're on WordPress 5.5 and later. Um, I remember in the original block editor wasn't doing this. So, you know, things, so, you know, make sure you have the latest version of WordPress too, right? Because the behavior may change and looks like it's evolving quite well. So, okay. A little bit on that. Okay, let's go to the next question, okay? Um, How do you pronounce your first name, Kais? Is that right, Kais? Kais, are you there? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Uh, 
uh, you say, if there's some time, can we talk about archive? Why is there always post archive? Okay. Uh, that was something I found while I was doing a site audit uh, through a actually and found some of the links. Um, I don't know why, like, um, like I haven't seen it before, but it was all under archive. And interesting was like, uh, I actually consider it as a duplicator for content. Uh, so anyway, uh, just want to have, a, I didn't go through the link. Thank you to whoever posted the response. But uh, just want to know like the concept of the archive, why it's always have archive. Uh, can we disable that? Is it okay if I delete archive? Like, I, I don't actually know the, the concept of archive in WordPress. Is that something that's standard? I don't think so. Uh, I think so. Yeah, Alex, it's built into WordPress from day one. It's yeah. the, uh, you know, just as your homepage defaults uh, in the blog way of doing things to just simply a serial listing of posts by date, an archive page just regenerates the oh. same thing or oh. by category or by date oh, or by okay. tag or whatever you decide. I got you. Um, I got that's you. all it is. Archive doesn't actually mean Oh. in the archives or somewhere different. It's oh. just presenting content according to some filter um, just for the purpose of navigating that content. I got you. Okay. Right. Uh, so the talking about archive like page uh, in the basic, you know, whatever, six or seven PHP file right. array right. in the core. So, so if there is a, a post on the archive, is this, does that mean it's a second copy or is the no, 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 no. Let's go back. No. Let's go back to the basics of WordPress. And WordPress started out as a blogging system, right? From day yeah. one, yeah. 15 plus years ago. So the idea of blogs was that you publish a, you know, a blog article, a post, right? Yeah. And then what happened is that when you uh, decided, uh, when the system uh, uh, reorganized your content, it would say, okay, this is last month's posts. And it would, you, and the permalink would have the month. And so it wouldn't quote unquote archive them. What it would do is it would create, you know, an older set of documents that are just in, indexed in a particular way. And then they called the idea of archives is, is, is not actually in my mind, correct. What they mean was that it's posts that are kind of accessible beyond let's say the homepage of recent posts or something like that. Uh -huh. So archives are not something that you need to do anything with. They're just there. There are other systems that do have the concept of archiving a document or a page, which means that it's not, for example, may not be accessible to the public anymore. Uh, the, the WordPress doesn't have that. WordPress has private and password protected pages and posts, but it doesn't have an, a notion of an archive. So it's just a, a kind of a, an abstract concept. It's not a technical concept in any sense. Okay, is that an option to disable it? But second to that, I don't understand why you would want to disable it because otherwise people can't find what you have been posting. If you're not going to use it as a post, then you might as well do a page. This is essentially what you're saying is I don't want to archive it. I don't want to show all of my blog posts on a page, like a grid of all of them. Mm -hmm. If that's the case, then you don't want posts. You want pages. Yeah. And so, and so, so in the customizer, you can specify what your homepage is, for example. This is, by the way, still to this date, a default site has blog posts on the homepage. That's usually not actually what people want anymore. But, but the point is that there is a, uh, in a customizer, there's a homepage settings. Almost every theme has that. Uh -huh. Are you seeing my screen here? Yes. Yeah. So you see, this is, this should see, this should say your latest plus and potentially your archive. Maybe, probably not. But the point is that you might have a, a previous and next indicator there uh, or link that allows you to go to your archives, which is okay. posts. Okay. Okay. Uh, and by the way, it says it's reverse chronological order, a classic blog, or if it, so if you switch it to static page, you specify which page you want, and then you switch it to a page and then you can have, you can specify where your posts are or in your, in your nomenclature archive. So by the way, this website, we have latest posts on here, right? So, because we want people to just see the la latest articles, right? These are pages. We could switch to that. So our projects is our homepage. And then the, this post will be under some other menu item, these posts, or as you say, archives, but I wouldn't even use that word archives. I'm not, I'm not actually even sure where you saw that. Is it in the user interface somewhere? 
It's we'll be back that's right, the codex to Alex as a core um, concept. Um, oh yeah, you, they use the word archive. It took me a bit to get my head around it, wow. but it's just that like should a, be that should be custom. That should be search and replace with something else. It's just not enough. It's not the right word for it. Yeah, but so, an option to change that word. Hmm. Is there an option to change this word, archive? No. Uh, I'm not sure a word. <laughs> no. Well, I mean, okay. I don't, I don't uh, were you seeing it on your dashboard or yeah. on your um, well, or on your on your website? Well, which yeah. one? Well, uh, I didn't access it directly. I found it through some search results and in some of the crawl, uh, like after the site audit, uh, the report. Uh -huh. But could, couldn't see a direct link. Like it would be order. probably in your template. Maybe your template has nomenclature called archives somewhere that's uh -huh. potentially even hard coded. So you would yeah, have your a theme. theme. Yeah, your theme, your theme. template. Yeah. Your, your templates or your theme. For your template. blog archive page, mm -hmm. it's called archive. You mm -hmm. haven't changed the name of right. it. And okay. that's what Google would be picking up. We'd have to see that in order to understand where that name is. Oh, no, that's fine. I just want to see. Like, well, you okay. could change it. Yeah. Do you know if you have a page that is called archive, just like Alex has this list here, let's fix your website recap. Is there a page that actually says archive? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> My recollection is that the archive page, WordPress doesn't expect an archive page to have the word archive anywhere in it. It simply does whatever you tell it to. List posts by date, reverse cron order. List mm -hmm. uh, posts by mm -hmm. you know category X and category Y the first category before the second category or whatever it is that you're trying to do. Okay. So it's more like a, a method of filtering and reporting on posts with a preset format so that it becomes um, a technique which you can use without really understanding it necessarily. This, this codex is where the archives came from. There is this arch there's an actually there used to be an archive.php template and then it was just called that and it, it, it rendered older Archives. I actually don't know if themes even have this. Maybe I guess maybe they should, but uh, uh, probably Dan will know. Uh, let's, see. let's see if this theme even has an archive. Yeah, it has an archive.php. Oh, here it is. Here. So it's possible to access this page, archive.php, and I'm probably this page. If I look at it, um, I don't think you'll find the word archive. No, you're probably right. I probably won't find the word archive in here. Well, because it's not something that, that from a navigation point of view, anybody would understand the way it, it actually works. Right. But then many terms in tech are not particularly helpful mm -hmm. uh, in understanding the concept behind them. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a whole variety of reasons as to how they come about. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. But yes, this is where you would see the word archive in the WordPress. It's in the template editor. The theme editor. How many of you actually have gone into this to poke around? No problem. Thank you so much. Uh, Be very careful in here. Be I'm very, a front end developer, so yeah. <laughs> Be very Be very careful when you make changes yeah. in here. There's yeah, actually an option to PHP's, turn this off. Yeah. There's a there's a there's a WordPress configuration option to simply turn yeah. it off. And do, so this is inaccessible altogether yeah. uh, because this, you can break your site very easily. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, okay. Uh, oh, okay. Thanks, Robin. Uh, so Robin put some information about uh, what an archive page is and uh, on the Visual Composer website. Yeah, yeah. thank you, Robin. Uh, I haven't gone to the link yet. It actually does a pretty decent job explaining it. And um, hmm. <laughs> I, I confess that, I mean, I, I understood in a vague sort of way, but only when I looked it up did I see that it was something very specific Mm -hmm. But if you think about the way WordPress has evolved, you can understand sort of from the blogging background of WordPress yeah. why yeah. this archive thing would be almost as important as the notion of a post and blog uh -huh. is the notion of, well, how do people read a blog? Well, so I had an indicator here that you're recording and I was, I was going to stop my recording if you were, but okay. That's cool. No, but let me double check. Uh, it let me just see because you're like an alternate host so right but i'm i'm actually in that circle add-on um not that runs on top of zoom and uh, i don't see a record option anyway it's not a problem if you're in school um heather hey heather hi how are you i'm all right how are you nice to see you here yeah good to see you like the yeah. old times Good old Indeed. days. Good we sat in small, tiny rooms with many people. <laughs> yeah, it's the good old days to the new old days. This is uh, this is really fun. We have a lot of fun in these meetups. 
Um, well, you got a question here. Uh, do you want to ask it instead of me reading it? Oh, it's just that I, I have a site that I have to, it's not a, it's not a major site to the, this client, but it's that they, um, they have WP Bakery on it and Stockholm theme. And I don't, I've never used either. It seems older to me. Mm -hmm. And I think Dan is right there that it's in the theme settings, but I can't even figure out where that, I can't find it when I go down the left side, mm -hmm. I can't find. So what it is, is that. Well, why don't you share um, your screen? We'll help you, but you have to share your screen. And then you can navigate us to it. You know how to do that. So what it is, is that. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, that's this button here. We don't know where that goes. We don't know what email address that goes oh, to. Oh. Okay. Um, and, and actually they said, well, just delete it. I can't even get to it to delete it. And then the contact page this form we don't know where that goes and i can't find it on the contact page now just just so everybody kind of <laughs> this has happened to me like at the beginning but so these guys that develop this site um uh, they uh they publish everything so i just noticed today in the portfolio um Look at this, like Berlin Design Week, Stockholm Fashion, Venice Art Pavilion. There's so much junk that's been published in this site. Um, the reason why we, uh, basically the client forgot about it and it came to his attention when um, it was hacked. And uh, so I've been just finding these interesting aspects when you let other people build a site and all, you can, all the client can see is the front end. Oh, that's fine. And then, and then all this stuff like, uh, unnecessary stuff and posts that came with the theme and it's, somebody just published it all. So anyways, I can't figure out in here where like my initial thinking was to go into the customizer. No, sorry, to go into, um, let's see here. Okay. Heather, I might be able to help you. Yeah. Um, okay. So, you know, the theme editor, right? Is there a folder uh, called contact.php? Uh, so if I go into appearance and then theme? Yeah. Appearance, theme, and yeah, the theme editor. Yeah. Go down there. Oh, theme editor. Yeah. I don't yeah. normally go in there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. If you don't know what you're doing, you shouldn't go in there. Okay. No. So, Check um, for the theme options. Yeah. Like a theme option. There should be, it's either... Um, there's like, there's, they should be, uh, they put a custom, so theme header, theme footer, class email.php. What, well, what is that? That's, I think that's a customized one. I should go into that one. Too. Can you scroll down the page? Yeah. There should be a theme. Theme option. header, theme, like there should yeah. be like an yeah. index. Over there when it says select like options. Like no, go up, go up, go up, go up, go up. No, no, go up, go up, go up. Go up. Okay. So, okay, so under um, theme functions, functions that there's a, a file called class email.php. Um, just uh, click on that. I uh, just want to see what that says. Were you here? No, under it, class email. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. I can't then, imagine anything like. And there's nothing there. Okay, that's oh, okay. weird. If you go to the select options, I think you can find there probably the, the options for the theme. If you scroll okay. down the page. For this pop-up that shows on the homepage, I've seen similar that scroll can down. be created through a plugin. Okay, a plug so, all right, so it's not there. Yeah. Why not go to the contact form? Uh, yeah. right. I'll get there. I didn't get there. Right, here. right now you yeah, can contact the, page. Yeah, go to the contact page. Go to the contact page. These are all the settings of the theme. You I, shouldn't yeah. touch code. Um, or tech page. Um, yes. Over here, probably oh, yeah, in the header. Page, yeah, that's almost too easy. Button. Let's see here. And then here, the con yeah. Enable contact form. There we go. That's so Dan, easy. Dan, can you give us some context as to why this option select options is here? And can you? Can yeah. You so it? every team de developer, and there are like hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands, has a way for you to control their theme. Right. Now, usually yeah. they either put that under dashboard, under appearance, yeah. or they create their own menu item yeah. 
like here, which is called select option, which is not very understandable. That's why also Heather didn't find it. I didn't. I, didn't get um, yeah. that. <laughs> I would call it theme options or something more understandable and make it higher. The theme uh, developer has an option plugin. where to yeah, locate that uh, option, that menu item. Now, under that, you can see most of the options that you can control with the theme, like you know the the way the logo is, the, the header, the footer, the fonts, uh, the contact form. So I'm sure if you look at the header, you'll probably see an option there for that button uh, in the in the top header, uh, the, the yellow one that you're referring to. Yeah. Uh, you should just dig into this and and find you know the option. Another another way I I uh, take a look at you know, the documentation. So if you know this is a Stockholm theme, go online, go to the event to market where it was purchased from. And usually the documentation is, is you know, accessible to everyone, even, even if you didn't purchase the theme. So that's another place I would look. I did look, but it became overwhelming. And I, I just thought like I had never, I mean, it's so logical. I knew when you said that, I was like, yeah, but I just don't know which one along here. I've never seen like select options didn't sound like stop oh. Homer, but it makes sense now. There may be like over a yeah, hundred different plug Yeah, yeah, you know, nothing can happen when, uh, by clicking it. But I'm if sorry. you don't mind, since that was pretty quick, do you mind seeing if we can actually find this? Because let me just show you. So okay. I'm in that area. Yeah, by the way, as you're, as you're looking that up, be very careful with those options and don't change too many at once because you don't know which one change Oops. actually makes the thing change, right? Because that's like you're configuring a whole bunch of dials on a dashboard. You want to know which one does what. All right, so now if you right click on request consultation and check the inspect, inspect. Yeah. This is a quick way to just, you know, backwards engineer sort of how yeah. the theme uh, developer uh, built the site. Now you can see, well, you can see, I can't see, it's all blurry for me. But to understand where this button is, you're probably, uh, you, and you don't need to show it mobile, you can show it regular. Um, if you see, maybe it says top header or, yeah, it says here header, top, bottom, bottom holder. So you would look at the theme options and maybe look for something like top header or some, something like oh, that. I see. Header. You can, you can change the setting. Let's see. Header, top. This is actually, for everyone watching, this is really important because um, this will give you the ability to tackle other people's problems. <laughs> oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah that's uh, probably the number one tool. I did do the inspect, but I really didn't. I didn't. Uh, I find WP Bakery pretty old. I don't know who got stuck with. Dan, did you get stuck with using that, having to use it? Yeah, it's a big pain. Mm -hmm. it's a, but this is not just it's WP Bakery. Up, uh, but this is the theme. It's not the, the WP Bakery. Yeah, this yeah, WP Bakery is Visual that. Composer. This is your exciting. That's thing. true. Good point. It's beyond WP Bakery. But... This is a custom plugin, it looks like. So they just, mm -hmm. well, the developer just put a plugin. Uh, it's called Select Options. and. I've seen, I've seen something like for that pop-up that shows on the home page, which comes through a plugin only. Okay, scroll to header position, header menu. I just thought I'm trying to make it Header fast. top. Click to click on header top. Oh. There's something on the left side right. says WP top bar. Would that be it? Okay, show header yeah, show header top area. Yes. Yeah. All right. And like now it. you can you can check header left and header right. Check header right and show what header it says. Enabling area. this option will show header top error, and this is where your button is. Sorry, Dan, say that again. If you just read what it says on top there. Scroll down a teeny bit there. Yeah. So show Wait, header really? top area. You had yeah, it that's the yes, one. Right? Yeah. This so is it where tells your button me is. that we're showing it, but it, I can't. This get. setting applies to header left and header uh, right widgets. So you got a clue here. Go uh, to widgets. All right. Gotcha. I feel like Sherlock Holmes here. Yeah, yeah. It's like a spy story. Go to widgets. So go to widgets. In appearance widgets. Go to appearance and then widgets. Yeah. And you're going to check header right and header left. You see there, it says header top left. 
and the header top probably header. Yeah, scroll header down a bit. Fix. Um, you see, you have a few of them. So you, you, have, you need to check. I was in here before I, I that you showed me that other part, but header. My header hex right. Just check all of them. Check all of them. Uh -huh. Yeah, open open all of them. Sidebar page. They're all empty. There doesn't right. seem to be anything in them. Yeah, so it's somewhere else. Oh, custom widget area maybe. Well, you have to keep on searching in the options. You're trying to turn off that uh, button? Is that what you're trying to do? Or, or no, well, I, uh, yeah, I could, or just figure out where Get it's rid of it. We don't know where well, it's, it's probably using. You want to find out where the email is being sent, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay, uh, so that's got nothing to do with the widgets. Go to the header.php file because usually it's it's there when when you put the header, like the on the theme on the theme settings, um, the theme. Uh, I think well, I, I would I would I would uh, exhaust all the select options options before I would start going into. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it's. Uh, I mean, I think Dan's right. I think there's PHP, probably an PHP option. This would be too much. Yeah. Uh, Keep digging in select options, Heather. Keep digging. Okay, I'll do that. We're, di we're digging with you. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because select options. Go to the header. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go to. Because yeah, we can really there. dig it. <laughs> Uh, actually, <laughs> said that. Uh, under uh, so let's think about this. I'm for a having second. issues. Let's, hold on, hold on one second. Let's think about this for a second. So you've got a form that comes up on a yes. button. So why isn't it a contact form? Maybe it's a contact form. Well, that makes sense. So that it's yeah. that would make it a widget. I think it's got to be a plugin because that's the sort of thing that you would it seems to me a place where you would set the recipient of the email message. Yeah not as part of a template or as a yeah. setting for the appearance mm -hmm. of the, the content in question. No, but Robin, the, the theme mm -hmm. uses a contact form, not as a plugin, but it's part of the theme. If you go right. to the so there's a contact page, page but didn't someone page say page that the top left and top right top headers were controlled by widgets? So if, so if the theme developers using widgets in that fashion, then you may very that select options may be a plugin. Top, right up body template page. Which controls that. Oh, I see. Yeah. The URL says it's part of a theme. It's got a, a custom pop-up form that PHP yeah. will target. Yep. Yeah. Header.php. This is this is built in the most obfuscated way as possible to be unmaintainable, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, okay. that WP Bakery, which was the original page builder from way back when. And I think it's just languished and not been much developed compared to its competition. So its way of doing things while revolutionary five or six years ago is now basically antique. Well, let's let's Dude. switch to Jeremy's approach or whoever. So what, what's the URL again? Um, DisabilityLawyerToronto.com. No, no, sorry. Go back to your inspect tools uh, and let's oh. see where the path is and we'll see if we can find this code. Uh, so go uh, dev header uh, dot top clear fix that's where it is right so there's a plugin yeah. called color box that does the pop-up you should check that oh oh yeah yeah but but dan look it's got there's a there's a there's a php file called pop-up form it's just part of the theme so it's got to be configured somehow have you seen that alex a clap scroll down keep going keep going keep going stop so that 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 is the Oh, request yeah. consultation that when you click on it, it invokes pop-up form.php, okay? Right. Which is in your themes library. So the question is, is that hard coded in there or is it configured somehow in, for this file? You can check the, the, the file, contact huh? form options of the, of the theme. Yeah. The select options. Let's look at that. I think there was a contact form option there. Yeah. Go to select options again. Oh, you're here. Oh, no, no, actually. Uh, there is there a contact form on the left here? Yeah, scroll down a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, contact form. Oh, yeah, contact, contact page. page. It says on the left, navigation on the left. No, not that left. Uh, here? Huh? Here? They should be shot for doing what they're doing here. This here? This no, this yeah, but like oh, move off oh, the visual composer. 
Oh my God, they should be shot. Look what's happening here. You've got UI on the left. You've got another UI. Oh my God. There you go, right there. Contact there. And well, Visual Composer is the old name for WP Bakery. Yeah. Hold on. Let me annotate this for you if I can. Can I annotate this? Uh... I, don't, I was going to say. Heather, in this column? Yeah, contact page under 404. The bottom. We were there, though. That's where we found that um, hello thing that was, and I changed the email there. Yeah, but there might be other stuff there. Okay. All right. There's more than one option there, right? So I'm just curious is this Divi that you're using? No, oh. WP Bakery. WP Bakery. And, no, it's Stockholm theme, and WP Bakery is the, right. the page. Yes. Okay. But we haven't touched that yet. We've, we're, talk, we're looking at theme options for Stockholm, whatever that is. Just, just, you know. So, yeah, I just don't know if this is the same. How about contact form settings at the bottom of the form area um, to the left of where it says save changes? Oh, yeah. There's a button. Where? It huh. says Contact where the form settings. Scroll to the side save changes. Would it be possible for the, for the host to give us? Yeah, just move your cursor down, to, you know, to the, oh, to, the close to the bottom of the display. Yeah, that. Let's see what that is. Yeah. There it is. Mail sent no. to. No, no, that was the contact. I changed that. That used to say reception. No, the one above it. What is WP top bar? Like there's a theme. Hold on, just a second, just a second. Hold on one second. Yeah. Mail sent to. Enter is that what we're looking for? For receiving messages submitted through the contact form. It's going yeah, to be on form, there's a contact page with this uh, corresponds to, but I think what Heather is saying that the pop-up might be using different settings. Did you check yeah. the pop-up after you made the changes here? Um, well, here's the thing about the pop-up is that there should be a way to change this information here as well, it's right? A different, that's like, a different story. Like, right. Aren't, aren't you changing where you want this sent to? Yes, I am. But I'm just saying like when we changed, when we did, um, when we did this, you could see that there were different options there. So I, I'm just thinking it's a different area because it's a different maybe, different code, different form. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I don't know. But <clears throat> like services of interest is not, whoops. It's just a part of a form builder of some sort. There's some yeah. sort of configuration of a form builder somewhere, right? But it could be a contact form that you're using on one of them. Which there is contact form seven on the other pages. Okay, that but, I have changed already. Okay, but like, now you change the, the, the two, the email too. So is request consultation now sending to a different email? You can test it, right? Well, I guess I can. Well, because you changed it, right? Well, I mean, I guess I can put my email in there and see. Hmm. It's a different tab, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I don't think this is the form because tech form settings. This is a page that has lots of option and that scroll to is a navigation on the sub separate options. There's one, two, three, four, five separate sets of options here. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, that's not going to work. It's going to be one from, you can't have it. The, the email have... from is one email address, right? Mm. This works for me with other sites. The from being that's two from, from, not two. Oh, How yeah, yeah. Being... Sorry, I wasn't listening. I've been a from. <laughs> yeah, the two could be two multiple, but a from. <laughs> I admit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we'll at least test this one. Hold on, hold on a second. We were looking at request consultation. Honest. I don't think it is. It's, it can't be, but why can't it be? What makes you say because that? Because we should be able to see more there. Why? Why do you why do you say that? Because if you're if a site's going to give you options to build something, then that could be completely changed somewhere else. These options here may be completely different, or may even be hard coded. For all I know, I don't know. Like who knows, right? No, you can't make any assumptions, right? The only thing you can do I'm is I'm not you making an assumption. I'm making an, a good 
Right, but if you don't get this email, then probably either that configuration is incorrect or that's not the right place for it. I just don't think it's that easy, but I'll check your plugins. It could be it could be much harder than that. That's true. And it could be just that easy. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so you want to yeah. check you want to check this other contact form so that one is a that one is a lost cause obviously that's not that's not doing it there oh, okay so the other contact this one that i bet you is a contact form from contact plugin so oh, that's, that's part of the theme now it's that's the contact form of the theme. No, I, I edit this page. Click edit this page. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's, it's not here. This say hello won't be in the edit in the page. No, editor. that's why I, I it, called it, you guys for help. It doesn't exist at all in this page. No, nothing, nothing about. No, it, it doesn't. That's the what say, I, the word say hello doesn't exist either. No, okay. it only exists in the theme. That's what uh, Dan. Yeah, that's why he figured it was in the setting. That was in my note. You have two different forms we're talking about here, right? Yeah. Sometimes what will happen is that um, the theme itself, you can select a template called contact template and it'll just auto populate this stuff within the theme. Cool. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. Let's say I wanted to change anything here. We can't even find where this old bar is, right? I'm looking at it and it's in the widget. So I think we might've overlooked the widget. Okay. There. But it says text widget and it should be there. <clears throat> By the way, like this is a good reason not to use a theme like this in case anybody's wondering. Yeah. It's because it's a un completely, uh, there's so much here, you don't even know where to look anymore, especially when you hand over to somebody. If you don't document almost everything, yeah. It's like, it's like, it's like Crazy. going on a wild goose. The headache. There's too much options here for what probably is actually being used. Okay. So, Dan, you said go into where? Try the widgets again, appearance widgets, because you know in the code I see it's a text widget. Mm -hmm. But we, we should, you know. They were empty though. All the headers were empty, Dan. Maybe we skipped a widget there. What about the that WP top bar? Down here? Yeah, what what is that? Top clear fix header top bottom folder header clear fix a Q logo. Stop. <laughs> wow. Wait you almost think that they designed this stuff to drive people crazy. Like on purpose, right? Right, Robin? Like totally on purpose. Okay, it's in the header. I know that. All right. Well, which header? Which who whose header? Like <laughs> I mean <laughs> Like, like this, these, this is called phone. from different. This is a UI that comes from different eras, different parts of it. Yeah. Some look almost modern. Yeah. Some okay. look prehistoric. I it out. Oh yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Um. Div, it's yeah. When I deleted the element header bottom clear fix or the header, it's the header underscore top underscore bottom holder clear fix. Um. It's it looks like it's hard coded in there. That's a class that you just yeah class yeah. Okay, yeah. well, is there a way to delete it? No, not easily. Um, I can, but I I had to um delete the element, and then now it's gone. So I'll share a. I mean, that's not yeah, yeah. right. But that, CSS, but that's not. Yeah, that's the CSS way. That's yeah. the, oh, you know. yeah. the, the, the last the, the last resort basically, right? Like, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Hmm. All right, let's go into your theme editor. Let's see if we can hack your theme. Do you have a backup of your site? Heather, mm -hmm. Heather, Do you have no, a backup of your site? Not. This is a just like this is something that some company convinced them to get. I. Right, but Heather, do you have a backup of the site that you can restore? I uh, probably not because well, then, do, then, then we're not going to do what we what we're about to do then. <clears throat> yeah. No, I guess the, <clears throat> there's no backups from the host because I looked at looks like the hosting is the same company that uh, built this. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's actually. Just, it's interesting. These guys, um, they started out as a um, designing company, and then they decided to get into hosting. 
So they oh, yeah, convinced this client to get all these websites to help his, it, you know, search presence, which is a load of garbage if you can't maintain it. But are you trying to maintain it or are you trying to redesign it for them? Oh, they just want to we don't know what's happened with this site. We, we, they kind of, I didn't even really know about it for a while. Mm -hmm. And then we got notice it was hacked. And so, no, I'm not touching it. It's, I don't want to put any energy into, um, we just want to make sure that, that if someone does fill out a form that it, they'll actually get the information. It's pretty wow. important. And right now, even the core of the form right now doesn't seem to work at all or does it? Oh, the one that I sent a form in? To yeah. Yep, it did actually. Oh, perfect. So it works. That is that is where it's changed. Ta-da! Ta-da! We fixed your site, Heather. One of two. <laughs> the other one's too hard. And I, I, don't don't... I don't actually believe you on the other one. Okay, let's go back to your thing. Go back up, and I want to edit this page. Click edit page at the top. I want to see what's going oh, on. Oh, you don't believe me about hello? I don't believe you about this contact page. That it's Even Dan believed me. I don't believe you though. I'm a believer. This is horrible, my God. Well, like Does I said. Anyone want to wait, take wait, wait, wait. Let this whole thing load. There's a visual composer being rendered here. So this is WP Bakery. There's a form here somewhere. No, oh, on. On, the, on the right where it says template, that's the contact page template. So it automatically ah. adds the form in there. That's where it is. Yeah, the, the, the bacon is the icon. Wow. It's phone, wow. fax, email. If you really, really want to change it, you can always just uh, remove the, you know, duplicate the page, take it off as a contact page, and build it within the editor itself. There you go. No, no, but we've got the one issue fixed. Yeah, that's no, but, but this this page is using contact page as a template. Not this. Forget about that one. That one's done. No, we got this fixed. This is good. I've got those are, actually... different, those are different forms, Heather. Contact, I know. Request contact. Right, right. But they, but they both go to the right address now. Oh, contact works okay. Yes, that was the first thing she did figure out. Oh, yeah. And it was this other one that she wasn't able to do. Oh, great. Oh. And, and it I'm... turns out that the same, well, I'm not sure. Heather, obviously, it wasn't the same field yeah. because you changed it already. So, Whatever we changed today was the right thing for you to know for that request. Oh, yeah, that one totally button. makes sense. It's but, in the theme, and we changed it. That totally was logical. This this whole bar, though, like like I was saying, oh. we can't. Where can we access? This is should be one unit, right? Like I should be able to delete this. You should, but you. But the question is where. I mean, yes, you're, it's probably one of those options. Let's go go look back into the options. I'm sure it's in there. I mean, I would continue digging in there. Yeah, there, there was a options. toggle there to remove that bar, if you remember. There's a what? There was a toggle. Yeah. In the header. Okay, let's do that then. Remove that header top bottom holder. Yeah. It was in header probably, right? Yeah. This is probably most of the options of the theme. Are I do see actually, I, I never know. <laughs> There's an item in that list towards the bottom called content bottom <laughs> i guess that goes with content top yeah. but it, they're they're not exactly useful terms so if you do scroll to header top header top uh-huh and turn and then just so say header yeah. top area yeah now click click no, click no and click save and see what happens <clears throat> <laughs> just gonna say the same thing trial and error is the guy here well that's the i mean that's the only thing you can do right because have you run out of memory yet, Heather? Couldn't you open another 50 tabs? Please. Okay, you guys. Oh, it's gone. Gone, yay. That's it. Brilliant. Wow, we're really making speed here. Look at that. All if you right. continue turning stuff off, you can turn off the rest of the site here. The thing, though, is, <laughs> is what the heck? Oh, is it hiding in I here? I knew it, yeah. Yeah. Is it hiding below here? What? Yeah, it's all hiding. It's all in there. Like it's that, that turned there, off yeah. everything. But those other options are somewhere else in these settings. Maybe not on this page. Maybe there's a social. Maybe there's a social settings. And then there's maybe some options there. Uh, okay. There are literally hundreds of toggles in this thing. Hundreds. I know. It's really nauseating. 
It's nausea. Yes, that's a good word. And I just recently heard um, somebody, actually Yana, Alex, you know Yana. Yeah. He's all excited about some developer who uses this. Oh, he's so fast. And I thought, holy headache. Like, oh, no, but no. But actually, that could, be, that could be true because the reality is if there's a thousand settings here, every site could look different simply by a combination of oh, 30, 34 different options well. there. So, yes, of course they're fast because they can just go through this. They know every one of the options. By the way, see that reset there? You want to really make the site look bad? Don't, don't do it. But that reset at the bottom of the left navigation there, hold yeah. on all the way. See where it Guess says what I, just wait. You know what I just did? I don't remember. Oh, I don't remember which one I freaking turned off. And mm -hmm. It was the header top thing. It yeah. said header top. There's also a header button icons. Is that? Right there. Yeah, I think that's it. Header and grid. Yeah. No, that's not it. No. Okay. It I see it on again. That's on. You turned it back on again. I think yeah, and saved. Header top. Header top. Header top is the scroll too. Thank you. But how about there header button icon? There it is. Yep, that's the one. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Somehow no I can't necessarily hear and do so it. You want, if you want to actually make some money with this client, here's what I would do. I would go through all these options, document the ones that are actually doing anything. Say it'll take you about 20 hours to do, charge them for it. And then they'll have an, a, a good navigation. And they'll say to you, hey, you know what? Would you maintain this site? You can use your documentation to maintain it. And then you've got another client. Right. No, for me, why I wanted to come to you guys about this is because it's very important for me to learn how to do things and understand. And I spend a lot of time trying to figure it out. And I got really frustrated. I, I Googled and I, and I looked on the left side, but now I know, look further on the left side, <laughs> you know, like, um, I just know in more detail to, to dig in deeper. I wasn't digging in deep enough because the tools that I use, you don't have to dig that deep. So well, no, they're, the tools that you use, you know, right? Here's the thing that you know, the ones that you use, so you're comfortable and you know where to expect them. You have muscle memory here. Right you've got 20 new things that you probably over a year or a couple of months, you could probably know exactly where these things are of trial and error, but then- I don't even want to know though. Well, yeah. there's, that's a different story. Yeah, the problem with learning a unique scheme is that unless you really do a lot of work, you're going to be hard recovering the learning time. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. definitely. I knew you guys would be good to show me like the inspect source and like what that, you know, what I'm actually looking for, for hints. Yeah. Last, very good. Month, last month's video had a really, we did a deep dive in how to do that. Oh, actually, yeah. Alex, I, I read an interesting blog post about Firefox's latest version has some inspect capabilities that none of the other browsers have and particularly not Chrome. Cool. And one of the, one of the uh, additional sort of capabilities is some sort of like tile that appears when you hit certain things that gives you a complete display of the information about the element in question. Right. And so um, I'll, uh, I'll dig up that post and include it in the notes, but it awesome. was made a good pitch for the advantages of using the developer tools in Firefox versus Chrome. Sure. The only thing though of that is like, seriously, out of like, 10 people or let's say 100 people how many would actually even know how to read it like i you know i found i knew to use inspect source but then i had trouble interpreting it myself i would so. hope that everybody on this meetup eventually will will be able to get around that reasonably well you don't have to be an expert but it's a it's essentially a must if you're using wordpress in my mind like as a developer as a as a as a, as a website designer and one of the things that's important is that um, those different areas that you can see in the inspect tool can be broken out into separate windows and rearranged and made larger or smaller because many, many of us, when we first look at the inspect operation going on, have trouble seeing things. I mean, it's just, it's hard. It's like a mass of little detail, but if you open it up and expand the amount of space it takes, it becomes less intimidating, I think, in the result. The technology. Yeah, the yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, it just takes practice, to be honest, really. Oh, absolutely. Like, absolutely. I've got a question about, um, Heather, your comment um, in regards to the fact that this company had a designer who actually hosted it as well. I just had a designer offer me the same thing as soon as my, um, my site ground um, membership is done. And I'm wondering about that. So what are the pros and cons of doing that? Do you not advise that someone does that? 
do I know? I'm sorry, I don't really know the, specifically. Have, the, de the developer actually hosted. You just said that this particular company, the developer, said that we'll host it as well, and then yeah. that's the problem. I just had a developer offer me the same setup as soon as my site ground membership was up. And I'm just wondering about the, oh, some, can you guys not hear me? Someone said I can't hear yeah, you. Yeah, we can hear you. Oh, okay. Um, so I was just wondering about the Speak pros just and cons a of that, if you, if you suggest that or not. Um, let me just switch to this. Oh yeah, that's much better. Is that better? Okay, that oh, yeah. means that my, that my mic on this is not working. Oh yeah, that's way better. I'm not really following that. Can anyone else Okay. Help? Yeah, I think she's asking that if you're going to use a developer and they have hosting services as part of their yes. array of services, then are there advantages and disadvantages to using that same developer for both the site and for the hosting itself? Yeah. And I think the answer is that, the first part of the answer is that the developers or whoever's agency or whatever, they're all using the same set of hosts. It's just that they're wholesalers and, and we're retailers or, or, or just users. And so that's the very first point. But um, from a marketing point of view, it's done to lock clients in so that it becomes one more thing to, to, to lessen the chance of them leaving you and going to some other developer uh, yeah. if you have them on hosting as well. Okay, gotcha. All right, I, just, I was just wondering because- okay, and, and Just now I get it. So in this case, yes, it has been very beneficial to me because it means that I'm not the first person that they harp on. It's, it's, the, it's the host's fault. And there's been some pretty nasty emails when the site's gone down or something's wrong. And I, I remember I was in um, Fortino's and the site went down and I saw that nasty email and I was like, ha, huh, not my problem. Huh. You know, oh, yes. we pass it, pass but, uh, over had, to the had, guy, had, wherever, whatever country <laughs> these people are in yeah. that can fix the yeah. site. And so it's been a big relief for me. Um, interestingly, I've had to do a lot of hand holding though, because, um, like they said, they would do back, like, so I tried to use updraft plus and I couldn't, um, for some reason, even the premium didn't work. So I passed it off to them to do backups and I got the client to pay. Um, and so now their job is to, to back up and then update. And I've had to say like, well, it's the 15th now. I don't see that you, you haven't done any updating of the of the plugins or the theme. So I'm still babysitting it, but it's really nice that it's not my problem. I'm just basically Good. overseeing it. So do Heather, you work a lot with lawyers? But Heather, I want to- jump in here, please? Heather, I want to challenge you a little bit on that though. So if your relationship between your client and you've built a site for them and their perspective is that you either recommended or you somehow kept, took over the development on whatever host they were on, the perspective, at least my experience, is that the relationship with the host is, a, is kind of like a, a very open one. Like it's in the sense that you, it's the kind of an unnamed entity. It could be GoDaddy, it could be whatever. And nobody really cares unless something goes wrong. The problem <laughs> is, though, is that if you don't make it clear that hosting and you are separate, which a lot of developers don't, in a sense, they might be separate, but they just don't make it clear. The, the client will always come to you when there's an issue first. If the client site gets hacked. Well, though it's, so it all depends on how their relationship, like many people out there already have their relationships established and then somebody new comes in. So my main job is more SEO related stuff. I help them in other areas, uh -huh. but I do keep my foot into the technical side of things that I can catch issues and I can guide these guys who have, you know, they, they have, they have to know all the page builders and all the themes and so I, I'm more knowledgeable. Well, this one, I'm not, this is, this was the site that, that they recommended so that they could get more money in their pockets that they ended up abandoning this site. They don't have the manpower to keep this site updated and their main site updated. But, they actually but, them. But, but imagine if they said to you, we want to redesign the site. We want to create a staging site for the site. And the host that you went to didn't have that capability or it would force you to but do. They do. Well, no, I, I understand that, but let's say they didn't. Well, which means that's why certain developers and designers recommend a host or package it together because what they're expecting from the host is at a particular level. That is to say the level of service performance value for money is a particular level. And yes, there is a form, if they, if they offer that service as part of their development fee, then that could be a form of lock-in, but sometimes it isn't. Yeah. It's, it's actually not, it's not completely clear, uh, cut and dry. 
usually developers and designers are asked to recommend a host for a particular exactly user. which usually, i normally do yeah i've never seen this relationship before and i actually um it is unique because they're not like super big um, this would be considered managed wordpress hosting yeah. but these guys aren't super big and, and they have this other creative side to them so i'm enjoying I, seeing how they run their business i just rescued uh, someone from a similar situation the person developed it, had, had the hosting, and was in control of everything. And so it was just a nightmare. Yeah. And it all depends on who's behind the business, really. Well, everything was connected to him. Right. So, uh, so her domain name, everything. So she was basically held yeah, hostage. That's another situation. That, that's bad. Yeah, you should but never had, give your domain name to a third Some party to maintain. Never. I, I keep the domain name separate. And the hosting separate from each other because once something goes down, you're, you're screwed. But the client should own the domain name. Nobody oh, else. No, 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 no. They own. own the no, no. They own the domain name, but I mean registered through a different thing, not where the hosting is. The hosting company is hosting. Yeah. The main registration goes through a registrar. I use a Rebel in Ottawa. Okay. So, so you can do like good, good buy guys. on Dream Host, host on site, ground that kind of thing. Yeah, Keep it yeah. separate. And, okay. And, and, yeah, the hosting would be someplace else, but yeah. They're always separate because what's happened recently is because it was all in one place. The guy did it said, well, you have to, you have to have it, but you know, you can't have it. Oh my goodness. What a nightmare. And the poor woman didn't know anything about it. Like she did, you know, luckily she had hosting that she got for an organization that's up uh, near Halliburton. And uh, she didn't realize it because her name was on it. It was hers. <clears throat> so I said, fine, you got the hosting. It doesn't gonna cost you a thing. Like, how you doing that? You already paid for it. So uh, we were able to do it and, and uh, start all over again. Had to start from uh -huh. scratch, but it'll be nicer this time. It'll be good. And she's, she took a look at it, the, the main part of today, but <clears throat> she says nice and clean, but it is difficult to try to move everything around. Let's uh, continue with the questions on the meetup, uh, okay? So Gabby, are you here? Gabby Bulos? Uh, no. Uh, okay, that's it. Okay, so uh, let's go back to people on the call. I'm going to check my chat here. Thank you, everyone, by the way. I appreciate all your help. Thanks, Heather. Sharina, you asked that last question. Do you have a follow-up on that? Oh, no. Are you finished with the ones off the, off the meetup site? Yep. Because I did post mine there. Did you uh, not see it? Oh, let me refresh. Hold on. Sorry about that. Uh, I did. <clears throat> Let's see here. I'm just refreshing here just to see. Okay, here we are. I just saw the comments and then they went it's away. It's below Phoebe. Yeah. Oh, there it is. I keep on refreshing and it keeps on removing. Uh, Robin, what's the question? I can't see it. I just, <laughs> I just had it and lost it. I know. It, it refreshes and then it goes away. Hold on a do you get Do you get feedback on sites? No, it's just that tricky uh, thing about copying from these pages is uh, very tricky. For some reason, this the meetup links. page is showing me the comments for 10 seconds and, and then it goes away. Okay, so oh. for Shireen, she says, I have two requests. Could I get some feedback on my website, Navigation UX UI? I'm going to redesign the site with Thrive themes, and then she provides a URL. I'm looking for a WP developer to help with customized conference site and another URL. So those are the two questions. I see. Oh, I see. I, I see a whole bunch of more comments were just added in the last hour. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, all right. Uh, let's look at that one. All right. You want me to share the, share your site? And we'll, yeah, we'll take sure. a look at sure. it? Okay. Please. We normally don't do too much of this because it's not necessarily a fix your website, but like if you consider fix, it's good. Okay, so so first, I love how you have a picture of yourself here right in the opening screen. I think it's great because it, it sounds like you're selling your speaker, your motivation speaker. I'm selling me, yes. Well, that's, <laughs> that's good. Corporate so trainer, that's, corporate trainer. I love it. I love it. I think that's great. A lot of people don't do this, by the way. You'd be surprised. Thank you. What, what's not connected is I got somebody, I'll never do it again, somebody in India to do this. When you open it, it should have a box that comes up to say to join a little bubble. On the, on the none right of here. these, I'm, I'm ashamed to say none of these are connected to my, um, to my, uh, to active campaign. Oh, 
I don't yeah. know how to do it. So well, that, yeah, that's possible. We can look at that. But so you're saying there's some content on the right here? Yeah, it usually it's a little bubble that comes in. It says, you know, for communication tips. Mm-hmm. But that's okay. What I do, what I really need to do right now is connect it to, I don't know what she's done. So, and as I said, I'm going to redesign it. So this definitely is empty space here, right? Yeah, there's, but it should pop in there. Yeah, and for <laughs> purposes, you need content there. Would be yeah. a good idea. Yeah, so where is it's it? It's just a picture to tell you the truth. So you're saying for SEO content, uh, for SEO purposes, I should have some content? Or at least describe it, describe exactly what you are and what okay. you plan yeah. to do for people in that along with your picture okay yeah yeah you, there's, there's a big empty space here that you really want to take advantage of yeah right? and as i said i as when i was doing it i really didn't know what to do so okay so all right i see so what i do and who i do it for oh i had the pop-up come up now shireen did you okay yeah. great and yeah, it's actually a, i think it's just a picture a picture that, of the bubble. That's a pop-up a pop-up is not just a page right the pop-up comes up later later on the site so like right after you yeah you, sorry it's this little thing with a slider that's that's not yeah. connected mm-hmm. is there any way i can connect that um what well, theme are you using oh god it's if you scroll down she has as i said i this it's is when painful. i really didn't know anything about oh. that's okay it takes wordpress well, or we'll anything. find out in a second what theme you're using so i use this plugin called built with yeah which kind of does an x-ray of your site um and let's see you've got where do you get that from it's my secret i'm not going to tell you oh i know it just kidding just kidding just kidding it's builtwith.com oh yeah it's awesome builtwith.com and there's another one called what runs which is not quite as good but it gives you some other information in fact here what runs is telling me you're using the unfold theme yeah so this is what runs it's a chrome plugin and this is built with Two different kinds of technology, but similar kind of. So oh. built with so you have you have Mailchimp kind of embedded. Not something. anymore. I use I use um, Active Campaign. I even know that was set yeah, up. Yeah, but anything. it's there's some remnants uh, signature in your site that's using that. Okay. You have a, you have a built-in email marketing system installed in your site, Mailpoet. <laughs> you, you may not know that, but you do. It's a really Thought. cool system. I've used. Is it? it. Is it? Yeah. What does it do? It does email marketing. It's a, it's not. It's replaces Active Campaign. Oh. Yeah. Oh, oh, wait, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I cannot remember that. You don't have to pay for Active Campaign. You already got it. Um, and and that one you says is pretty good. It's very good. Mail, really? It's really cool. Yeah. And it's especially if how you much subscribe. Is, you how subscribe much is it? to it? I don't know. There's different plans, but they have their own emailing system through SendGrid, and they have like automatic responses to, for signups. It's really cool. They have multiple different lists. And you say they're better than Active Campaign. I don't know if it's better, but it's, oh, but it's integrated into your WordPress site, so you don't have to sync anything. Okay, so somewhere, some, up to your site, you somehow, some way, I'm actually collecting names, and I don't know, right? I have well, to, it to might be it. going into this mail phone, potential. So who, who built this site for you? Uh, a, a woman in India, many, many years ago. Did they give you documentation on what they nope. put inside of it? No, nope. nothing. Should you should go back to them and say, could you tell me exactly what you installed in here? I don't think she's going to do that. Honestly, it's not, it's not appropriate not to get at least a few pages of documentation. Yeah, that's what I'll never do overseas again. Oh, yeah, no, like, forget mm-hmm. it. Okay. I mean, All right. I mean, there are good there are good suggestions, but you got to, the scope of work can't be just, here's my site, you're done. It's got to be, here's my site, and by the way, you've got these things that you can do in it. And by the way, here's select options in the bottom left corner, and this is what you can change there. And almost all, they never do that, right? They, most developers okay. don't do that until you pay for it, right? Right. You say, right. I'm going to, I want you to document what you've done. That's something that you kind of don't think about until it's too late, right? Okay. Um, because you should be able to use this. Anyway, so you're using Enfold. I'm not quite sure what Enfold is, but let's take a look. Actually, this, this plugin should actually take me directly. It's a pretty decent theme. It's a good theme? It's okay, yeah. We've okay. used it before. I've worse. <laughs> Well, is there a page builder? Um, I, I, I don't know. I don't know because it was so long ago. I didn't even know builders were around. I know there, no, there isn't. It's a your classic uh, theme with a lot of options. Okay, cool. Yeah. So it's, here, here's, the, here's the theme that you're using. They it's usually 15, use um, short codes. Which is so what's the, what's the overall, um, your overall impression of Thrive Themes? They all got their positives and negatives. All negatives. Okay, good enough. They're really, they're really, you know. 
Yeah. The best theme is the one you developed it yourself with a developer, but it costs the most. Right? Yeah. Right. Right. Um, okay. Um, the other thing is that I am looking for someone. I am looking for a developer to work with me with this conference that I'm putting on. Heather, do you work with a lot of lawyers or was just that just that one off? Well, I work with a lot of lawyers. You I do? I, yeah. Okay. We should, we should probably connect then if okay. that's okay. Cause that's, I, I have the lawyer summit. So um, <laughs> yeah, that would be great. Um, so what what I need is someone, and I, I'm really sorry that I don't have much technical information for you. I do have another WordPress person you can talk to, but if you want to pull up the next site and what it is, it's there was a company who was looking to um, hold their, their Rocket Matter. So they're like, mm -hmm. they help law firms to manage their firms. And so what they did was they did a conference. They couldn't find a conference um, platform that worked. I do have one hop in, but it's really buggy and I don't want to use it. So they're allowing us to use theirs. And I need a WordPress person to talk to hit their WordPress person. Uh, she sent me a whole bunch of stuff. It was built on Elementor. So, and then they used a, a WordPress plugin. What you're talking about like, uh, you, you wanna manage the whole like conference, like check-in and registration and like the, uh, expo hall. Is that what you're looking at? Is that what you wanna do? Yeah, I want somebody to design pretty much this. I'll, or, I'll, I'll tell you, um, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of a contrarian opinion on this. Using WordPress to run a conference is a really, really expensive and problematic uh, choice, especially from a time perspective, mm -hmm. particularly because there's all kinds of special use cases that a lot of plugins don't take, take, take into account. And think about it this way. You are kind of building, you're kind of reinventing the wheel when it comes to using WordPress for conferences, in my opinion. It's just my opinion. So I'll give you an example. So you think about how much it would cost and time and effort to actually put together all the features you need versus using a system like Feedloop, for example. This is one example. This is a Toronto company. Yep. I, are they and, Toronto? I know about them, yeah. I didn't an, realize they were homegrown. It's extraordinary software, right? It's really good. And, the, and it's not WordPress, right? What it is, is a turnkey solution for running events. And you pay for module and they can even help you set it up. And it's completely like, it's not WordPress, right? It's not building the Lego blocks. It's, it's, it's getting a pre-made home and you select the countertop for your, you know, your marble and that's it. Mm -hmm. right? Or the light fixtures. And it's got everything colored built in and, it, and lots of people use it. And, it. and it's priced usually based on the number of people that register. So the issue becomes, do you pay somebody or do you figure out what it takes to rebuild everything Feedloop built or you just go in and move into that ready-made condo and, and uh, go from there. See, I thought this was going to be easier since Rocket Matter had done it, but then they have an entire team who, because that's what they do, right? They are um, So they're the they're developers. They're the, well, hold on a second. So Rocket Matter is who? A Rocket Matter, what they do, they provide, they um, have a software that helps lawyers to manage their practice. So the, the, the same size lawyers that Heather would work with. Okay. And so they obviously have, you know, developers and so forth so so they just did their own so maybe you, you are need right. their own software their own, on wordpress their own yeah by using wordpress elementor and plugins it's a mistake to, to do it's that a, so it's a mistake it's, it's a, i personally think it's a mistake for to to subject a conference to using a wordpress as a you can do it i mean it's possible mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but i just i just i think that if you want to really put on a kick-ass conference with a lot of cool features that mm -hmm. most of these software don't have networking sessions, group sessions, all kinds of really cool. It actually depends on how many people are in your conference. Is it going to be 10 or is it going to be 10,000? No, it's not, it's not going to be 10,000. We're starting at about 50. Is it going to be 10 though? No, it's not going to be 10. It's going to be yeah. more. So, so here you go. So like if you want like if you want real engagement, especially with virtual conference, I don't know if your conference is virtual. It's virtual. Oh, this feed loop has complete virtual features for virtual conferences. Like mm -hmm. are they going to have that here? Are they going to have like interactive sessions, networking groups, breakouts and mm -hmm. stuff like that? Mm -hmm. So they had that when they had, when they ran theirs. See, I was thinking that this was going to be, uh, because I already have Hopin, um, I thought this was going to be a, I, I guess, an easier option for me. And, uh, but obviously not. <laughs> well, I don't know. It could, I mean, it's it turning out to be, it's, uh, I've, I've had, I've gotten so far a quote and I'm waiting for another quote. So it looks like it's going to be a more expensive option. So, well, I mean, yeah. this product, if you want to run the whole conference, I mean, you have to compare the pricing of what this is versus right. getting something built. I don't, I'm not exactly. sure you're going to be able to beat that because this is, this is a turnkey solution, right? Yeah, this is based, basically on the number of people in your, in your conference, right? 
Uh, oh, oh, they're not provo- Oh, they have to get pricing. You have to. They have to price it out. Okay. Yeah, I have. I, I know what it is. Like, I have got. I'm. I'm potentially partnering with these guys. I don't know. I'm talking to them, but the. But this is like completely different approach. I. I actually tend to think that certain kind of use cases are not good to do with WordPress, and per- okay. and primarily it's because you want to. It's time to market. It's like getting to completion, right? Getting to launch. Sometimes mm-hmm. you don't have the liberty of evaluating 20 plugins and trying to figure out what works the best. You want, you know, you want to know, does it do all of these things, right? Can you register for an event? Does it do speaker management? Can you check in with mobile, exhibitors, badges, calls for proposals, surveys, seed plan? All these things are all part of, part of this product. This is probably about 30 plugins in WordPress. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, doing all this stuff, right? Okay. Nice so. second, Alex, on that. You go with, you go with something that has been mm-hmm. already finessed. Instead right. of saying to someone, hey, can you build this for me? Then what happens is they hide behind the computer and spend a lot of time and it's a high cost and they might not even produce something very good. Um, yeah, I, I personally would go with something that's already kind of established. At least try it out. Right. And you know what's and cool, Alex, yeah. when, mm-hmm. once you, when, If you learn a software like Feedloop, or it doesn't have to be Feedloop, something else, but it's not mm-hmm. building a WordPress site. Then when you get to know it inside out, you can go to another lawyer or another conference and say, you know what, Feedloop is my partner. I can set this thing up for you in a week and, and mm-hmm. go try to beat that with a WordPress developer. No way. I'm serious okay. though, in a week. Like you could basically load your content, set it up, they launch your site and you're done, right? It's okay. just a question of whether you want to pay per member because in WordPress, you usually don't pay per, per registrant. You, you can have 10 or 10,000 registrant, just use the same platform. The reality is that the cost, <laughs> usually on smaller conferences, is reasonable to where Feedloop is a great option or something. <laughs> Thanks, like. Jeremy. All right, that's great. Thank you very much because you know what? I just unsubscribed from Feedloop's uh, Feedloop's uh, emails <laughs> <laughs> because Jeremy I thought... you can build a site in three days. Uh, I, yeah, how can you say that, Jeremy? Jeremy? Depends on the scope, doesn't it? <laughs> if I can jump in here, uh, my brother has left the session, but I could really use some help. Uh, okay. Yeah, sorry about that. I'm done. Thank you. Sorry okay. about that, Brian. Right. Oh, I'm so, uh, sorry, Serena. I thought you were done. My apologies. No, I, no, I am done. I am done. So okay. Sorry, um, Thanks, everyone. I launched or, uh, a Raptors website, and I, I used WordPress before, but I was using it under the auspices of a very large umbrella organization called Fansided. And uh, now I don't have that uh, kind of backstop. So, so my brother Patrick, who just had to check out a few minutes ago, um, is much more technical than me. So, uh, so I'm in a situation where I have to ask what are, may very well be for you people dumb questions, but I'll, I'll ask them anyway, and hopefully you'll forgive me. One of the things that I'm grappling with is, is as I start to get traffic, uh, I want to be able to, to push notification of my new posts to people. And I don't know how to do that. And, I, and it feels like it should be one of those things, it should be a piece of cake, but I don't know how to do it. So when you say push, what do you mean by push? Well, I want people to be able to put in their email address and say, every time Brian publishes something new on, on rappers for the wind.ca, uh-huh. uh, I want it. And you want it sent by email, by SMS, by social media? How do you want it? I don't it? know. Well, well, I'm open-minded. I mean, I, I'm old enough and dumb enough not to know how to answer that question. <laughs> well, <clears throat> yeah. Well, I've definitely seen a lot of news sites nowadays. Um, they have that, like, you know, receive notification. So it's like browser, you know, desktop notification. Uh, but the other type of notification is just, you know, email subscription. Okay. Like, so oh, is it easy to set up email subscription? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so MailPort, that plugin we were talking about, it's a, it's a plugin that you can get for free. It's an email marketing. Plugin. One of its features is, when a new post is posted, you can set up a template email that automatically gets sent to you, your mailing list. Oh, well, you can uh, subscribe to RSS for certain sites. And... Yeah, but nobody uses that, so. Yeah. It's a mail pod, it's a plugin. Yeah, mail pod. I mean, RSS to grab the information and display it. Yeah, I know, but people need to use, RSS is a technical thing and really it's like, but people understand is SMS, they understand email, they understand like the kind of things that they're used to using. Yeah. RSS is a technical thing that unfortunately is for a much smaller audience. So, so like, uh, so if you, so like, for example, you, you know, you have a sign up form that automatically goes into MailPoet's database 
in WordPress. And then you have a template that's configured and it will automatically send an email when something is posted to those people, for example. Or you can manually send one. You can send a newsletter every month. Say, here are the last 10, here are the last 10 posts. And what's cool about MailPoet is it actually digs into your content and it will automatically, for example, show you the last three events if you use like the event calendar for, for events, for example. Or you will look at your last three posts and it'll automatically show you here are the last three posts you had. So you don't have to, you don't have to link, link those in and automatically insert them for you. So it's pretty cool. Okay. Well, I will definitely take a look at that. And then it's, I think it's free for under a thousand subscribers. Uh huh. And also you have to use their slow, you have to use the built-in email service of your host. So it delivers email very slowly, but if you pay for it, you can use SendGrid and then it'll deliver thousands of emails a second if you want. That's well, part better for you. I, I hope that I'm in a situation where that becomes a, a, a something I have to cope with. Well, the Raptors are now not in the fi- in the playoffs anymore, so you have plenty of time well, to pull this out. Well, uh, you're, you're right, but and I don't mind going slowly now that it's the off season. I want I want to get this right. Oh, you have a lot of stuff to talk about, actually. So, yeah. So that's one thing. SMS is another interesting option. Um, you can integrate with Facebook. There's an, a, a plugin called Auto Social which will automatically post to various social media. That's pretty cool. I've used that one with a few clients. Auto Social allows you to configure LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, uh, and then it'll automatically post to those platforms when you publish. It's pretty cool. Yeah, okay. it's a very complicated uh, question that you're asking. I, that's, I think, why you're not getting maybe a lot of different answers. Mm-hmm. You should probably join a Facebook group that uh, with people who, you know, focus on email all the time and emailing clients, there's a lot to it. Mm-hmm. I have a client who uh, uses Sendy and he creates the emails, but then he has to deal with people who get ticked off with him that, how did you get my email address? Even though, how could he get it? Um, and so you have to deal with the, uh, what are the rules? There's rules. What's the, does anyone know the name of them? The Canadian rules, the, the anti-spam, whatever. Anti-spam. Yeah, so there's that aspect of it. It's really not that easy. When you use the word easy, that got me concerned. Nothing is really easy when it comes to this stuff. You kind of have to really focus. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, you may be better off, I don't know, with maybe a face, I don't know what age range or like maybe a Facebook group where they can go and they get the they get the update. You can at least test it there to see if people respond to whatever information you're sharing with them. Um, Cause if they respond, then that means that Facebook will share it in their algorithm in the feed. Um, that actually might be the cheapest alternative. And in the meantime, you can research uh, all these different options, but it, it's, 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 it is kind of a journey though. Like you have to know your audience as to what they want. Right. And you have to like do some research kind of, but like, yeah, but, yeah. because yeah. if they have Gmail, we all know that, these type of emails, if you don't respond to them, no. they end up going into uh, promotions. And then eventually after a period of time, Gmail will ask you, you haven't responded to this for a month. Do you want to stop receiving notifications? Yeah. So, I mean, it's not that easy, but you should be testing how you can engage, who you want to engage. I would imagine there's a lot of people in the market of what you're thinking of Raptors related stuff. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, I would start by liking all those groups everywhere and seeing what they're doing that people respond to. Um, but in the end, you have to build a, some kind of a value for your audience, right? Whatever it might be, you have to have information that's unique, right? In the end, that differentiates you. Because there's probably a lot of fan blogs, right? And, a fa- and fan sites and stuff like that. So you have to- Well, have- yeah, there are. Well- but, uh, but I've, I've been doing this for a while. Just going out on my own is, is, the, is the variation here. But what's, what's different between yours and somewhere else's, just as a differentiation point? Did you articulate that in a sentence? Not, not without necessarily sounding arrogant, but I write better than most of those people do. There you go. That's not sounding arrogant. That's great. You have better insights, better, better, interesting commentary. Yes. I've, I've been a Raptor season seat holder since day one. Now we're talking. I know the organization. Now we're talking. I've met some of the players. I met Nick Nurse. I've, uh, you know, I know these guys. There you go. So, so then therefore the, so because so you're look, you look like you want to provide stuff to real super fans, like not just the average fan, like myself, 
but like people are really, so like, then you have to, you really have to talk to some of the people. How would you prefer to get notifications on our site? Maybe it's SMS, maybe it's text, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's Facebook group, right? So like, and then you have to focus and, and try to understand that target audience you're, you're serving. It's a marketing well, exercise, right? You're, you're right. I do. Uh, the, uh, super fans, yes. Super fans can also be almost neurotic. I mean, basketball can be sliced and diced almost like the early days of uh, sabermetrics in baseball. Yeah. It becomes painful. Yeah. Like, I, I'm not, I don't want to turn this into, uh, you know, the yeah. ma a math guru session. I, I don't like that either. Right. But I mean, like, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a question about your audience. I mean, how big is your list now? Do, do you have an email list now? Uh, some, yeah. Do you know what your analytics look like when you send it to, the, to those lists? I can't tell you that, no. No, you should be able to do that. For every single thing that you do, no matter, no matter what it is, Facebook or Twitter, whatever it is, email, if you can't tell how many people look and click, you, you shouldn't even do that thing, if you, honestly speaking, because you're wasting your time. If you can't analyze what it is that happens, so MailPoet has a, a link and open tool, just like any email marketing program. You send it out to a thousand people, it will tell you after, right away it will tell you, and after a week you can look at it and say, 20% open and 3% clicked. And here's a thought they clicked on. Then what you do another campaign and all of a sudden you get 70% open and 30% click. Well, you did something much better on that second campaign. You've got to know that though. What was that, what was that called? You, you said? Hmm? No, I'm sorry. Are you talking about an app? I just. Oh, MailPoet is the plugin for email. Oh, MailPoet though. Okay, the plugin. But email marketing, one of it's, it's been around for 20 plus years. The reason why is that Email marketing, notwithstanding all the issues of deliverability and visibility is if somebody wants to read your email every single day or every week, they're going to find a way to do it, right? And if they don't want it, if they ignore it, they won't do it. But you at least can tell how many people are actually doing it, how many people are clicking. And so that's what's good about it is it's very fine. It's very straightforward analytics capability in email. And, and because of that, you'll know what you're doing works or doesn't work. Same thing with doing a banner ad. Same thing with doing SMS messaging. There's a way to track click-throughs there as well. Same thing with Facebook. But if you're not doing analytics, you, you might as well forget it. Pack it in. Because that's what marketing okay. is all about, digital marketing, analytics. Um, Brian, where are you currently uh, sharing this information? Well, it's, uh, I've got a website now. I've, I've started it. Um, would you like the address? I can give it to sure. you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I should put it in the chat, I guess, shouldn't I? Or you can just say it. Um, Alex is going to Okay, write. I can just say it. It's um, uh, Raptors 4, so the number 4, the win dot CA. Cool. Do you have Raptors 4, F-O-R, the win dot CA as well? Yeah, there you go. Raptors 4, the win dot CA. That's it. But does it, do you have Raptors 4, the win, F-O-U-R as well? Uh, no. Should get it because then people misspell it, they won't get to the right place. <clears throat> cool. What was that again? Raptors for the win.ca? Yeah. Yes. Oh, here I'll. I'll there. <laughs> Got Raptors. This, Brian, do you have this connected to Google Search Console and Google Analytics? Tell you. They. Uh, yeah. that he does. Google That's Analytics. a very good question, and and I think I would have to uh, turn that one over to my brother. You okay, do. so so make sure you get connected to Analytics and Search Console to see what's going on to with your website. How many people are, you know, how Google serves it and search results. What's it? What is it coming up for? Um, uh, okay. How many people actually spend time on it? How long that they spend on it? Mm -hmm. Well, oh, that's Google Search Console. Yeah, and Google Analytics. Analytics, yeah, analytics. So Google is trying to amalgamate all of the various analytics capabilities, put them into one platform. Search Console is how, how people search and find your site. Right. Analytics is just overall traffic and where people are coming from and what kind of devices they use. It's a whole, whole rather, like a real big, big piece of this. You can do a whole nother meetup just on the platform. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But it's really, but yeah, you've got, you've got Google Analytics for WordPress installed. So you've got, you've been recording traffic. It's a good way to measure your reach too. So like every time you send an email, you can see what your spike is in traffic. And uh, 
or if you do an SMS or anything like that, right? It's a pretty simple looking site, by the way. I have to tell you, this Absolutely. is- Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm nowhere near ready to even, even launch. I mean, this is just sort of a secret for the time being. Why don't you actually just do, let me ask you a question. Why, why instead of doing a site, why don't you just do a newsletter and then send this content out by email instead of having a site? Because then you don't have to worry about creating the, the site or the way it looks. You can just have a form on here and say, if you want to get content, subscribe here. And then basically you can send it out that way. If you really, because the, the idea there is that you're kind of creating, not a paywall, but you're creating like a bit of a, a wall and saying, if you want to, here's an example article. If you want more stuff like this, subscribe. And then at least people were, you'll drive people to convert to subscribe to an email list as a starting point. At that point, you can collect other information, but I think you're kind of giving your, your, your interesting insights away for free here. I can't help but think Twitter might be an idea too. Yeah, for sure. And you've got Twitter here, right? Yeah, my, yeah, I, I've got to get more serious about Twitter. I know that my brother's been beating me up about that. Well, again, it's just a, you install out a social it'll tweet, but it, again, it's, it's, you've got to get the audience, right? That means you have to yeah. engage on Twitter. You've got to actually, like, it's all time that you have to put in. But Twitter, yeah, it's great for sports. I agree. Sandra said Twitter is great for sports. Yeah, it's a way to connect to all these people who Absolutely. are super fans. Absolutely. Absolutely. And to connect to the Raptors themselves, yep. I'm sure. Yep. <laughs> I'm sure they're on there. Yep. Oh, we've got a lot of stuff in the chat. Okay. Uh, I'm falling behind here a little bit. Okay. Let's uh, finish up. Nicole, are you still here? Nicole? She put, put a bunch of stuff up here, but. Yeah, Nicole's still there. I can see her. Yeah. Hi. Hey, Nicole. Hey. Do you have a question here? I think so. Yeah. yeah I had a, a few questions, but um, one of them I figured out while we were talking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> For the second one, I don't know, this is for Divi users. Um, can you build, like, let's say you build a web page uh, in your own site, can you transfer that over to your client's site? They already have Divi installed as well. Um, Nicole, I just responded to um, one of your questions. Yes, you were. it is possible to do that. Are you trying to transfer the theme, the whole page, or? Um, it's already got the theme yeah. and the builder, so it would just be like the page, be a home page. Um, yeah, it is still, I think it's, it is possible. So, um, is that in the chat there or where is that? Or on the website? Sorry, what are we talking about? But transferring just a single page from one site to another? Is that the question? Yeah. With, with, with like a landing page? Like if you build a landing page on. And what is this built with? What has what the page been created with? Divi. Just the, Divi the theme in question or with a page builder? Nicole, you can export a page with the DV's export tools and then import that page into the new theme. Okay. Into the new site. That must be under um, appearance, right? Under, so I would just up. put up a YouTube video on it. Let's I'm sure it that you, uh, Divi guy will have something on that. Yeah, the, Divi is very extensive in training and, and YouTube videos. If you say uh, search for export Divi page or Divi template, Maybe you need first to turn that page into a template and then import that template into that other site. I think you're right, Dan. Here's a page on a, not Divi's, but how to save import export templates in Elementor. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, most of the page builders have export uh, capabilities for their templates. Okay. So I'll mind you, you have to have the plugin obviously on both page both sites, right? Yeah. Yes, sure. Yes. It's both sites sites have Divi. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a good article, a step by step on how to do that. Yeah. That's for Elementor though. It, it, okay. So isn't that Divi is the Divi. theme and Elementor is your page builder, right? No, Divi no. is the theme Divi and the page, page, builder. page builder all in one. Yeah. Okay, but it uses Elementor as the page builder. No, it doesn't. What does Divi. it use? Divi. Divi takes Divi takes that does everything and then you're stuck with short codes. Okay. What does Weglot do? Okay. Weglot? Mm. Is it Weglot? Oh, Weglot. It's um. Uh, okay. Here, here you go. Okay. So Language. this is an article on. Okay. This is Divi Soup. So importing, exporting individual pages. So there's like a. There's looks like a portability. Uh, layout. 
a portability bud. I'll, I'll share it in the chat. Divi Soup, look at that. Yeah, they do They do a pretty good job, Divi, of moving pages between sites. So if you follow one of the tutorials, you'll probably be all set. DiviSoup.com. DiviSoup.com, look at that. Love it. But if you were to search on YouTube, you'll probably get, there's a guy that's always doing Divi, a couple of main guys for Divi. Sure. Sometimes it's so specific what you're looking for that it's hard to find sometimes. It's true. Then that's like an SEO thing where you have to get the exact words. And once you get the exact wording, then you will find more information. But this, this is a pretty like, common thing. This looks, like a kit, this looks like a recipe kitchen for uh, all kinds of Divi stuff. Basically. Is there any, anything comparable for Thrive Themes? Anybody know of one? For what? Is there anything comparable to, to this Divi soup for Thrive Themes? I'm assuming this is a forum, a knowledge-based forum. I think Thrive Themes is too big to have uh, somebody that could actually build. Yeah, that would be separate, I would imagine. Oh, wait. You mean like a, like a recipe kitchen? Is that what you're looking for? Or just a or, No, I'm just assuming this is like a, you know, uh, it said there was a knowledge base, but maybe just a forum oh. with other people helping oh, other people? Oh, for sure. For sure, Thrive have some kind of like a... Yeah, they, they, oh, they I, definitely I have do. Some kind of support form of some sort yeah, and support. Yeah, they do. It's just I don't really like it all that much. Um, oh, okay. okay. All right. I mean, there's, by the way, like there's almost every piece of software, you're not going to like some part of it, right? So it's a mm -hmm. question of do you like it enough? If you really hate it, then, then don't. And there isn't, I mean, you, you're constantly going to be paying a, a subscription fee for every single theme you have, right? Um, I mean, there's. Not necessarily. It's just a commercial theme, then yes, but it could be a free thing. Because, I mean, right now I'm paying for Thrive Themes, and if I do anything on them, um, I mean, if I ever uh -huh. cut it off or stop, my, my site's not going to go down, but it's just, I'm just not going to get updates, correct? Yes. Okay. You kind of want to pay in a way because you want to get, you want to know that people are actually have jobs on the other end. <laughs> but oh, no, no, absolutely. But if it's been abandoned, yeah, then that's a problem. Okay, so it's not good to write. It's better to Alex, uh, take a look at the chat window there. There's a question on Weglot that I think you'd want to answer. Sure. HM. HM, who are you on here? On, 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 uh... Heather, me. Oh, Anybody Heather. know anything about one called Heroic? Oh, Heather. Okay, uh, Weglot. So let me show you how it works. Uh, this is the sponsor here. So on our website, wptoronto.com. Shereen asked that. I w she asked what Weglot was. So I said, Oh, yeah, sure. I actually met the Weglot guys at a conference. Yeah. No, oh, cool. So, uh, so Shireen uh, and everyone else was interested. See, we this is wptoronto.com. This uh, this language picker is powered by Weeblot. Okay, so you can switch to German, and the whole site is automatically translated into German. Now, the first question people ask me is, well, why would I pay Weeblot to do this when we could just put, install Google Translate? Well, for if you've actually looked at Google Translate, you'll see that it's not available anymore. <laughs> It's actually, I found out recently where they just kind of made that either a commercial or they're just not, not allowing you to use it anymore the way it used to be used. Okay. But this is something very different. What's happening here is that Weglot is building a database of all the strings on your website, all the pieces of text, and dynamically translating them in the cloud using Google's and Microsoft's translation systems, AI systems, and then serving it back to you dynamically. So. You can add a new language just by clicking one option in a Weglot WordPress plugin and automatically your site is translated into that language. If you want to change the translations, you can go into the dictionary, fix a specific translation, click save, and then it will automatically reflect that on your site. What's cool about this plugin is that it doesn't, it runs completely independently of WordPress. It could be running on Squarespace, Wix, on any other site, your own HTML site if you want. Because what it actually is doing is it's sucking in all the data on your site, your forms, not, in, not images yet and not videos, but I think they're going to actually make images translated soon too, believe it or not. Um, but they're actually dynamically serving the new content in real time. And it's a pretty, pretty darn cool platform. So um, here is, uh, this is their, their website. And so let me tell you a little bit about how, it, how it's priced. Um, by the way, this company's in France, in Paris. So um, you can, um, the way it's priced is you get a free one, I believe it's a free 1,000 words, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, oh, 2,000 words, okay. So you have one language that's translated and you get 2,000 words. Now, 2,000 words may seem like a lot, but it's like not much at all. 
because it's your menu bar, it's your heading, it's your blog content, it's the it's the piece of text like the, the author name, it's the the common, it's everything, okay, completely everything. And you don't have to manage the translations. You don't have to go in and say, oh, well, I found this translation, I need to do it. It'll just automatically translate. Um, so that's your free trial. And then it, the way it works is. Depending <laughs> depending on how many languages uh, you want and how many words, it scales up from there. Now this is, um, this is a yearly cost or you can do a monthly cost. This is ongoing. So if you turn this off, your, your translations go away. So you gotta understand that this is a very different way of doing translations. That's a great, do you think it's actually worth it in, it's probably worth it in Canada to actually have that ability to translate for French? It depends on your target audience. For example, if you're a government site, you have a, you have a mandatory requirement. Here's a, here's, let me show you a client that we usually, we, this is not a WordPress site, but this is, this is a client that is, has a lot of French customers, okay? Because they're in Canada and they're in Eastern Canada and Quebec and New Brunswick where there's a lot of, there's a lot of customers. And um, here, let me just plop, pop this up. And so you can, and this is, uh, this could be a quite a bit of work to do translations, right? Oh, yeah. But if you have an audience that w expects a site to be in French, so this is the English, Right, but if you expect to be able to just click like on a lot of government sites that they have translators to provide translations, right? So we got uh, one. Uh, we got post for beginners, which was just published late last month. Says there's a twenty-five to one return on localization through languages, mm -hmm. and so that that's a fairly strong incentive. I'll include the um, link to the blog post because it's very fresh material. And quite well done from a beginner's level. Cool. Right. Cool. So I'm just I, wondering if if everything I offer is in English, if it's going to be worth it actually doing the. You only know when you do the analytics on your French content and see, right? That's true. Do it, you, we could do it just on one page if you want your home page and see what happens. It's really affordable. Yeah. So yeah. the reason why I we introduced all these languages is I looked at in Toronto what other languages, and I want to make sure that if we have people that have this as a primary language, that they're not excluded from our conversation. Right, exactly. Well, they might be able to, it might be difficult for them to understand English as a first language, but maybe this is a way they learn English, right? Mm -hmm. Like joining our meetups. So I chose them the top languages that uh, are spoken in Toronto, and we introduced them into the site. It does double byte characters. It does left to right automatically. It's just a brilliant, brilliant tool. And you That's notice great. it's completely, it's completely inherent, right? And I, I have these stop words. So like I, I, I told it, do not translate the word WordPress, just keep it in English. Mm -hmm. Whatever the word WordPress occurs, it doesn't <laughs> translate it. Same thing for the word meetups, because I don't think there's an equivalent. But this, this page here is. Now, interestingly enough, we link off to another page here, which is a volunteer application page, which doesn't get translated because it right. doesn't have WeGlide. It's not on the same right. website. Right. This is an example where we shouldn't do this. We should actually put this into the site and then it'll translate that form dynamically as well. Oh, will it? Even as a Google form. That's interesting. Not a, well, if the Google form is part of the site, it might, but the contact form and any you know, gravity forms or any built-in form plugins. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I don't think it would go to content that's embedded from embedded, somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah, I think the content would have to belong to that page. Right. Could, for their system to recognize it and, and process it the usual you know way. i think it depends on the way if it's an iframe probably not but i think it depends on the way it's embedded <laughs> if i remember correctly but if you use embed or object which i've just been reading about which are considered so-called replacement elements mm -hmm. then that's the way they you know the way the dom works is that whatever's in there is just replaced by whatever's at the end of that URL. Yeah, so, so Robin put this together for our June meetup here. I can tell because I think it's June 18th. And so he didn't touch the content in, in Korean, right? Right, Robin? You didn't really do anything in Korean, right? Oh, no, no. <laughs> so, but this so Robin, is, tell us what that all means. This is all yeah. in Korean. So <laughs> do you know something here? strange, though, is that on the AliExpress uh, site, which is obviously, well, not obviously, but is the Amazon equivalent from China, um, they don't translate comments. Uh, which are an important part of product pages. Totally. Um, they do everything else in the page quite nicely, but totally. not the comments, which are really, if you're, you know, paying attention, can be very helpful. And so it, it's strange that, that, that they would have that limitation on such a gigantic site. And, and this does actually, because as soon as a comment is put in, somebody visits it in French, it will uh, it'll convert an English comment into French for you. Because mm -hmm. it's part of your site, right? Right. This is Alex uh, talking about uh, different languages. I found an interesting uh, plugin the other day. Uh, a client approached me for uh, uh, 
two language sites like English and French. Mm -hmm. And there is a plugin called uh, Polylang, yeah. which uh, yeah, take care of like making a mirror and also take care of the URL to have that Correct. EN or FR in the yeah. URL. We glad but does that. But Polylang is, and, 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 um, and there's all the other languages expect you, unless you pay extra, to do the, to, to, to do the translations yourself. Yeah, and put yeah, them into the yeah. Site. yeah, you have to have the content. And, uh, either it's way. a different model, right? This yeah, is yeah. not the same model. This is a completely different model. This is yeah. a model that says, I don't have a translator. I'm never going to have a translator. I'd rather yeah. pay the monthly fee and I want my translations and then I'll go in and fix translations that I think are bad. Or just, just leave them, just keep them, right? Very different approach. It doesn't, it does, this system doesn't care that you're using gravity forms or using whatever. It just completely doesn't care about that. It's, it's literally doing it on the client as you're loading the page and going into the cloud. It's a very, very different architecture. Yeah, yeah. And so here's how you add another language. If you want to add, I don't know, throw out a language. Anybody? Arabic. <laughs> I, I, I think I already I have it. It's already there. Yeah. I have Arabic. Oh, how about, uh, we'll do, how about, we'll uh, do Afrikan. Okay. So his first one, it's always the first one that pops up on the list. What's that? It's always the first one that pops up on lists. Yeah. Okay. So there you go. Afrikan. So now I'm now, going to, hmm? you obviously have an unlimited, um, the, their pricing because their pricing went for one language. You have unlimited languages. Obviously they gave us a, a million they, word a account. Million words. Yeah. Okay. Right. To test this. Yeah. Okay. Okay. They just because we're they're sponsors. They so keep sponsors, right? That's what I meant. Um, Don't give, to know. a million word accounts. So we actually ran out once, believe it or not. Because I added like oh. 20 languages and our site literally blew out their million word limit. I had to, I had to reduce it. Uh, well, here, here's so here's how the button looks up. Mm -hmm. Right. So here it added Afrikaans. That's the that's mm -hmm. the South African uh, flag there. Mm -hmm. So now I should go to the website. Um, I've seen this actually not refresh right away. I don't know why. Let me just do a hard refresh here. I've noticed this before. Yeah. Does it say scroll? No. No, it's it's supposed to actually come up here in this in this bar automatically. That's actually how easy it is. It should be like that. I've noticed before I added another language. I had to go into the dashboard to to kick it. I don't know why? Because it's actually showing here. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. This is the Weglot dashboard here. So you've got a dashboard where you maintain a dictionary, right? So you, um, when you have a license to this, you get a, you get a dashboard and uh, you can actually see your, uh, your uh, dictionary of all your, your websites. You can actually maintain multiple sites if you want. And you can actually see like, here's, uh, here's multiple sites that are using it. And so you can actually go in here and uh oh whoa look at that you can the, see how many words have Russian, been you see how many words already wow it, it does eat up a lot wow oh yeah well uh, we have a lot of content on that site yeah right? yeah right so remember it's not just the blog posts it's literally every string yeah right? mm -hmm. uh yeah so here's africans actually enabled so i'm not sure why it's not showing up here but maybe it's because i need to actually visit the the site okay. but um i'll leave it there for a while it's you still can quite easy yeah and so here's like here's an example if you have a a french translation that you don't like you go, you go in here and it actually allows you to search the dictionary of all the translations. See, even word, even time strings sometimes are translated because they actually appear in a page. They may not, they may be static, but they're actually translated. Right. And so here's an example of a translation. So if you don't like that translation, you can go change it or you can delete it and have it re forced to retranslate, mm -hmm. or you can change, uh, you can change it and you can find out, you can also look at which pages are available on your site. You can has, look anybody, at the, has anybody ever reviewed the accuracy of the of the translation? Uh, you. That's up to you. That's just up to. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I want to translate. I don't speak that language. <laughs> well, it's a different model, right? If you have a, if you, yeah. if you want to depend on the accuracy, then it's a completely different approach. Different model, right? Okay. You basically go and well, send yeah, out. but remember that these guys who offer translation services are all using the same models, or at least back end. Um, infrastructure, mm -hmm. uh, which they then plug in to one extent or another, depending on what they're trying to accomplish. But the uh, WeGlot doesn't build the translators themselves, but it taps into the back ends of other translations. And so they say that they have the highest quality translations for accuracy, because that's one of the priorities they set when they build Ain't their that? system. Robin, as you were talking, I thought maybe they'll just be, just, just find someone who could just do it, you know, um, uh, a proofreading of it. 
they, I mean, they have speaker that. Who can do it for, oh, they, they have, have that. Yeah, they have to. They wouldn't be able to sell their product. It's actually, there's one other one, Alex. Do what's the other one? There's pay for that? We so, got, so, and then so, there's. So one second. So if you go into professional translations, yeah. you can submit your dictionary to be proofread by a translator. Okay, what do they charge for it? Where it all it depends. Say? It all depends on how. Depends on the translator. There's a whole, they have a marketplace of translators, right? Oh, okay. Gotcha. So, so you basically go here and you say which language you want to uh, export and then you mm -hmm. provide it to your translator and they, uh, they, they review it. They may charge you, if you're reviewing a hundred thousand words, it might be a little bit of a, a little, little bit of a, uh, mm -hmm. a cost there. But mm -hmm. remember, it's a different approach. You didn't have to derive the translations. You're giving them so they, they can scan it and say, that's good. And if they, right. they can actually log into this system, the translator, and then proofread and change the translations on the spot and save it in your dictionary and it automatically gets deployed. It okay. saves a huge amount of workflow. Yeah, time. for sure. We're talking sure. like hundreds of hours of time, sure, trust yeah. me. It's a, it's a real, real huge time saving. It's a really cool system. Yeah. This is the um, best I'm translation the system. Really um, it. Yeah, um, you know, does it have dialects of the same, la uh, of the same language? So um, oddly enough, I'm actually in Gatineau, Quebec right now. I'm staying mm -hmm. in an Airbnb right now, but um, like, for example, a lot of the, the French they use oh, here, the words like dépanneur, they don't have that in France. And there's a lot of like the words, uh, the French that they use here, like and, uh, and vice versa. Um, like they don't, they don't have, um, this, it's not in standard French. So um, it, can we glot um, localize like language, like does it have like a plugin for a, the localized version of the French language? Like That would depend on the underlying translation services in the cloud that they use, right? I think yeah. they use like three or four different ones if they if I remember correctly. I know they use Google's and Microsoft. There's another two that that are that are a little more specialized that they use. I can't remember the Dip. I think Deepo is one of them. But for example, here's Basque. So that's a a fairly unique European mm -hmm. language. Mm -hmm. They do not have French Canadian, which is unfortunate, actually. Um, well, I don't. Is is there that much in the syntax of the? Yeah. And I know I know in terms of um, vocabulary, but there's really I mean it's it, it's it's just like. It's just like in Switzerland. In Switzerland, the Germans and you know, it's it's still they have different words yeah. and meanings and so forth. But it's still the grammar and the language is still the same. Yeah. Well, again, if you you need that, then you go to French Canadian translator and say, "Is the job that this thing did is it good enough?" And they'll probably yeah, find right. some. You can actually do some translations and synonyms. You can load up. Mm -hmm. You can load up. You say, "I want this word always to be translated like this," and then you override its built-in translations. Mm -hmm. So you have a whole bunch of Good. stop words and rules that you can put into your system, which is a very, very again, a very different way of thinking of it. Mm -hmm. You're thinking of it as almost like building a dictionary, and then and then the exclusions and the exceptions, as opposed to I'm going to go and outsource my translations, and every time I do a post, let's say like for Brian, I was doing the Raptor. Let's say I wanted a French Raptors. Can you imagine? You have to send that post out to a French translator. They were translated. Then you would have to load it up into the site. And every single time he did that, he would have to do and pay for that. This is, mm -hmm. this is a set it and forget it. Basically, right. you set the languages. You the, does, it, does it take care of alignment in terms of Hebrew and Arabic? It does a pretty good job of that, yeah. Because what it actually does, technically, is it takes all the divs and all the various HTML elements, strips them out dynamically the first time that page is uh, visited, sends it to the cloud, the cloud translations, it stores the actual uh, containers of your text in its dictionary so that when somebody visits it again, it says, okay, this text is in this container, replace it. And that happens instantly, dynamically, all the time as the page is being loaded without much of a penalty in speed. There's a little bit of a penalty, but especially in the first time it's loaded, for, for the first time ever a new page is loaded in a particular language, it's got, it takes a little longer because it's got to go and do that. But then after that, it's uh, it's instantaneous. No, I'm Alex, talking this, about this... alignment in terms of right to left and left to right. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because yeah. uh, again, yes, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Alex, well, this. Sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just asking. This meetup is is monthly. Yeah, every, uh, third Tuesday of every month. Yeah. Okay. Alex, just to um, throw in a bit about Google Translate, mm -hmm. um, just a quick check. There are now three kinds of Google Translate. Uh -huh. There is the personal interpreter that you have on your phone or your computer. Mm -hmm. There's now, there's, there is a translate app, which runs on iOS and Android. And then uh -huh. there's the cloud API, or at least the API for which uh -huh. there's documentation going through how to do translation in the cloud, which is the equivalent thing, I think, to Weglot. 
Well, that's what uh, WeGlot uses. That's their back end, right? They right. Pay, and they pay and Google. so um, uh, Google's an option, but I think like so many things, uh, you, you probably have to do more work with Google than you do with WeGlot. And obviously, WeGlot specializes in this area, so everybody in the company is thinking about this thing the same way. And at Google, it's one of 5,000 products. So you can take that as, as for what influence it may have on how they regard their products. The city of Toronto used to have the Google Translate thing in there. In there. It really sucked. Right. It was using it, but I think it's probably gone because it's... <laughs> it's uh, it was that bad. Uh, well, they have something called Translate. Let's see how they're doing it now. Uh, oh, they're still using Google Translate. Okay. So, here, so they're doing it a little different now. Oh. Right, they're sending, oh my goodness. So they're sending their page directly. They're literally sending it to the website. Uh, and then effectively, you're now browsing through Google. <laughs> you're browsing the website through Google and it does, it does translate it like this. It's a little bit better than it used to be. It used to be really bad. Um, but so there, is, there, is this, this, uh, there appears to be a free option. Although I don't know, actually know if this is free or not. I, I have no idea whether the, this is available for free or not? Oh, no, in the city, they're paying for it. <laughs> uh, well, maybe, I, I don't know, because this is different than it used to be. It used to be what used to be what happened is you have a little drop down, but now it's changed. You can see the URL is literally, you, you, you send this URL to it and it sends it to you back again. You could probably put anything here. You could probably put, well, let's see, you could say English, and then there's a two language. You could put any URL here, or you could probably put wptoronto.com in here. Uh, and it will go ahead and, and translate it for you. So, so this is kind of the free version of this now. I have an off topic. Does anyone know anything about OBS? Yes, as a matter of fact. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, Robin, do you know any place where I can get um, a tutorial or something about how to, to, you know, to shorten the learning curve, learn it really quickly? Right, um, I've collected uh, half a dozen sort of beginner level tutorials for OBS. And then there's a couple of, um, um, uh, suites which add sort of um, a UI layer and such to OBS and uh, market it for more specialized purposes. And so that's the first problem you have to solve is do you want OBS the basic or do you want OBS tarted up in some fashion um, with extra capabilities that initially are free but may cost something later on. Um, uh, I haven't gone that far with OBS other than to confirm that it's well regarded, well supported for open source stuff, and um, it's suitable for beginners, particularly who are trying to move a video, for example, from some sort of uh, um, DLSR or video cam, cam camera that doesn't have the right connection because it isn't sort of modern enough. In other words, something you bought in the last year, you may be able to plug into a Mac or PC and directly deliver the video and audio. For everybody else, you need a capture card of some sort, which is a device plugged in between the camera and the computer. Right. What's, o what's OBS? Uh, open Broadcasting System. So if you want to stream and edit and combine videos and then and package videos, then OBS is the, sort of the base level. And of do you have these for, for free. And um, I'm sure iMovie on the Mac side is more powerful just for editing, but it doesn't do the stream aspect. So with OBS, you can stream to you know YouTube, Vimeo, whatever else. I think you can do Zoom. Zoom. like can multiple Zoom? streams to yeah. different platforms at the same time. Right. And you can also add in participants to the stream and have things like chat windows and comments and stuff that you know pops up in the screen depending on mm -hmm. how you've configured OBS. Okay. Um, do you have Do you have a place where you have all those tutorials? Uh, Is it on YouTube channel or uh, have you just collected them? <laughs> all my YouTube lists are private, but I'll send you the link for um, the um, OBS one because that's obviously pretty straightforward stuff. Okay. Um, do you want me to put my email in here or? Um, no, I'll, I'll be happy to put it into the notes. Um, okay, perfect, good. And um, perfect. we just think now. I'll give, well, I'll give you the two uh, YouTube ones that I started off with. Um, 
One guy came out with a very powerful argument why this stream version of OBS or Steamboat or something like that, why it was the, the perfect one to pick and all these great reasons and so or on. StreamYard, StreamYard. Yeah, and then the next video I watched, the guy said, really, there's no choice. I mean, you don't, unless you're a gamer, you don't need all the overhead that this other version has. Stick with the OBS, you know, mainstream and... Uh, mm -hmm. I just want to be able to add lower thirds, control the video on my Zooms because I'm a corporate trainer and I'm doing stuff virtual now. That's um, one of the yeah. biggest reasons why OBS has become suddenly very popular is because with the pandemic, lots of people are trying to get um, external content into their Zoom feed, right? And OBS can do it. There's also a... Um, uh, a controversy to some extent because the capture cards that were necessary to do this thing have tended to be quite expensive. And then the Chinese got to work <laughs> and they dropped the price 95%. And the question is, is what they produced any good? <laughs> well, I bought one and I'm fi I'll find out soon when I get time to go to it. But it should, the combination of this very cheap card and um, an OBS should mean that I get my Canon camera, my video camera, which is much better than a webcam, uh, to replace that as the feed for Zoom. Your DSLR. Using You're using your DSLR. Yeah. yeah. Right. Actually, I think that anybody who wants to do any form of webinar or podcasting, um, would consider OBS to be their sort of foundation infrastructure, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, and I'd so apparently podcasting and streaming has become much more popular for obvious reasons. And so the popularity of this product is shot way up. Yeah. I'd love to, to I, I wish I had the capability of uh, Ecamm. Ecamm is very easy to use. I've heard that there's, um, some people have found OBS to be a little, uh, the learning curve to be pretty steep. And so that's one of the reasons why I want to be able to, uh, to learn it quickly. Right. Um, there was another one that it starts with an M, M something other, uh, many, many, many things. I don't know. Okay. Yes, I've only looked at this for the very concrete sort of reason of uh, Zoom and webinar podcasting stuff. Right. Not for anything elaborate in the video editing or, or composition or whatever. Um, so that's a factor to take into account. But let me make, I'll make something like too. enterprise, uh, like level, it's called, I think, Wowza. I'm sorry, I didn't quite hear you. Uh, there's uh, another media server for live streaming. Uh, I think it's called uh, Wowza, something like that. Wowzer? Wowza. Wowza, I think. Uh, even um, Amazon, the, <clears throat> the AWS, they do have this as one of their services. Wowza, I see here. Wowza. Streaming engine, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's an enterprise level. <laughs> like, uh, okay. Yeah, recently uh, stumbled on a service called the Otter Network. Have you heard of Otter? Yeah, otter.ai. Otter. Um, the other dot network it's, it's just the ipad iphone switching system so basically it's 50 bucks a month and you can set up up to three iphone cameras and on an ipad or a pc as you're streaming you can switch between them doesn't do any editing doesn't do anything it's just a matter of it's a switching system and it then publishes that stream to youtube or, or facebook and say again because oh, otter yeah i'll share it in uh, yeah. Because I use otter.ai to do my um, transcripts. I know. Well, so, I don't know. Maybe they're related. Otter. I don't know. Um, otter.network. Yeah. Yeah, otter.network, yeah. It's a fairly new system. Um, 50 bucks a month? Huh? Yeah. yeah. $50 a month. And uh, it's fairly new. It's, it's really cool. So you get you have a free trial, five hours of filming. You get a single user license up to 480 resolution, five hours of shooting storage, and they have dedicated app for iOS. It's a really simple app. So basically it's an app and you invite people by their user ID into the director. You have up to three cameras. You can have people in the audience, set them up whatever you way, the way you want it. You can have a roaming camera. And then on the iPad or on the, on the computer, you basically see what's happening on each camera and you, and you, and you, and you switch like a switch. Oh, wow. And how do, you get the, how do you get the content from the camera to the computer? It streams over the internet, right? 
So, so you, you mean can the camera goes phone. over the internet to the computer? The, 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 your, you, they're all going into their net, to the cloud, and then your computer sees what the other cameras see with a small delay, and then you're able to switch between them. Um, right, and, but, then, and, and the result is what's getting broadcast to your system. Interesting. Uh, I mean, lots of cameras have Wi-Fi. Yeah. Um, but I wonder how they... Uh, no, this, you have to have an iPhone or an iPad or a, or a regular okay. computer. Right. Regular computer is, is where you is is the is not a, is, a, is actually that could be used as a camera too, but primarily it's going to be the switching station or the iPad app. Right. Right, because the the problem generally is just the going from an HDMI signal to something that the computer can process and send on, and all, um, all being done through the internet completely. Yeah, wow. interesting. That's pretty yeah. good because we're located right now. We were looking at actually getting switchers for our camera. So if we have, if there's a... This is a really cool solution. This is, this is, auto, this is I, I play with it a little bit because I had an event I wanted to try, but I, I never had enough other cameras. <laughs> Nobody else wanted to volunteer being another camera. So I only had one camera. But if you, what I mean by camera, I had one, one iPhone. So if I had two other people with an iPhone, I could just invite them. The UI is dead simple. It's so, anybody could use it. And then, then you have like three cameras and then you have what you're sending out and you click on the camera that you want and it switches and it broadcasts that. And it allows you to configure Facebook, YouTube, or, or uses RTMP as the, uh, as the uh, transfer protocol. And uh, you can set up to Facebook Live or YouTube Live. Mm -hmm. And then what it does is it actually, it, it sends it to their input of their outbound live. So instead of the internal Facebook Live, you configure the URLs to be <laughs> the configuration in Facebook that you do that accepts an external feed for the actual Facebook Live. Instead of the camera that's on your phone for Facebook, it's coming from an external source, which is Otter Network. Very I'm fancy, it's really, it's really fancy. It's really I wouldn't be surprised if in fact it was built on OBS. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't that maybe. be something? No, totally, maybe, but it's- it could but, be. But when you the sign, ones... just a word of warning, when you sign up, they take your credit card up front. And then uh, what they tell you is you can use a free trial, but then what will happen is after, I think after five, well, probably next month or after five hours, they automatically mm -hmm. charge you. So if you don't right. want it, you have to cancel it. So I'm just warning right. you. That's how it right. works. That's good. And so Robin, do you remember the, um, the other ones that you found the, that, um, that used OBS? I'm sorry, say it again. The other, um, uh, the other apps and so forth that you found that actually use OBS's backend. You said there were some, so, cause here's the thing is that- Well, there's one, there's one find... particularly well-known one whose name escapes me. It starts like st stream or steam or something like that, but it's game oriented. I'll, you'll see it in the uh, YouTube link because it com the, the reviewer touts its features in comparison to OBS. So you learned a little bit about both plus the, the notion of being built on top yeah. of something. Um, it's, it's streaming that everyone out. else, uh, nobody else sees, but it's in the back end of the whole process. Right, so. right. And stream you have, to, and I have something called Be Live, and I have not used Be Live yet. What I want is something that can use OBS that will help me with through Zoom, right? So that I can right. do all the razzle dazzle stuff. Because I'd like to have, I'd like to be able to for the conference to be able to brand the Zoom room. And I was just in um, a session yesterday for the Canadian Associate of Professional Speakers. And the speaker actually had, he brought it in and he was doing lower thirds. He could have, he could have you know, branded. Cause you know, when you had the two people, yeah, yeah. everything around it could have been branded. It was really well done. And he did it all through OBS. And right, so, and, and then you get but, things like screen sharing and, and still being able to see the person speaking right, and, right. and you know, all it, kinds of, and then as comments come in, they're actually displayed and shared on the screen right, rather than a separate exactly, window. Exactly, exactly. Um, but the, you know, one of the one of the most important things I think is that OBS is obviously an important component, but the quality of the result is so dependent upon the microphone, the um, the camera quality, uh, the lighting scheme, yeah. all the rest of this stuff. So it's like so many things you can sort yeah. of get into it easily, but then you quickly find out that there's a great deal of depth to be um, to be embraced and handled. I mean, WordPress is exactly the same five minutes and you're up and running and five years later, you're still trying to sort of accomplish what you might've had in mind in ignorance when you started out, uh, <laughs> such as life. Are you talking about my problem? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody in India knows what's going on in my site. <laughs> Thank you, by the way, Robin. Thanks very much. You're going to put that in the chat, right? You said? Yeah. 
Okay, thank you. I got it. All right, it's almost nine o'clock. We already yeah. went half hour over. I hope everybody enjoyed themselves. We still have some, this is some great. people on the call here. Thank you all very much. This has been my first time and it's been very, very helpful. So next month you'll see my, uh, the results of my site being redesigned. Awesome, Shereen. Thank <laughs> I you might for, have a problem. <laughs> thank you for joining us. Um, thank you for we didn't get to you. all the questions. I apologize for that because we tried to really address as much as possible so that people really get value. That get, and I recommend that if you really want to get your question asked, you should go on the meetup and put the comments there. Don't wait until the day of or during the conference, during the actual meetup, because that's the priority. We give priority to the people that are diligent about putting stuff on the site first, and that's who gets that's who gets addressed. Actually, Alex, it's worth that. It'd be worth adding something to the the post for the for a session that just explains a little bit that the better the the better the quality of your request, the more likely it will be fulfilled. Awesome. And to some extent, it would be nice to know the question in terms meaningful enough to be able to check a point out before you arrive at the session. So, you know, putting some thought and effort into the to the request will return many times over the effort. Yeah, we can probably give, give a, a nice, uh, an anonymous example of a good post and a not so good post. <laughs> I'll look back. Because I could see like on our meetup here, I'm not gonna name any names, but there's some really good questions and that are well put. And then there, there's some very open-ended ones that are very, that it takes us a long time to kind of get at what the question is. Um, and frankly, some really open-ended questions like, "How do I get more traffic to my site?" Well, that could be that could be a meter by itself. What's right? the meaning of life, right? Yeah, it's forty-two, right? Yeah. That's the meaning of life. Mm. Um, so, but the questions like, "How do I get more traffic to my site?" That's not really a fixer website. That's like a that's like a question we all have, and it, the answer is extremely common. Well, here's something interesting. I was reading Alex a post just a few days ago hmm. from a. a pretty good, pretty credible guy who was mm. saying that, forget about all this search engine uh, effort that you've been putting in, real quality and content is something that Google is now able to detect regardless of all the little things you may do all around the content. Uh, Google's business is so dependent upon delivering what people are trying to find that they've gone way beyond the things that we as individuals could do to content to, to make it promotionally more useful through search. Um, and now that's, if it hasn't already occurred, it's soon to occur that you just won't be able to beat their algorithms. Oh, I, uh, I believe. And if I you've believe, got I crappy believe. content, the perfect SEO solution will deliver no real value. I, I've believed that for many years and now I'm glad yeah, that- I've, Actually, has... I've always followed that as an excuse not Same to spend here. the time yeah. so, on so, the high so, end so, of the analytics. But, but in the end, those then the question is like, what does that really mean? Like, how, how do you, you know, how do you write good content for? Well, a lot of it's got to do with just knowing how to write, period. And the only way in my experience of hundreds of thousands, literally hundreds of thousands of chunks of text um, is to produce it, is to practice, is, is, is just to write, read and write um, is the way to learn how to write. And so um, knowing how to write high quality content is to really deeply understand your audience and communicate with them in a language they'll understand. And Google apparently is becoming very adept at figuring that out. So you see, we did this Divi export page. It was a very interesting, it's a very interesting search. So Divi, a very particular high niche product export, which is a procedure, a page. So a very simple search. It's very interesting, like how, like, how did 360 Brad get here? Well, above, you know, the above, most recent above, little thrill they've added is that when you click on the link for that snippet, yeah. that the text that's been placed here will be highlighted in yellow briefly uh -huh. on the page you bring up. Uh -huh. oh, can you see so that? in other words, it takes you right to the quoted text of the snippet. Uh, uh, highlighting, there it is. Oh. Huh, and that will disappear cool. in a few seconds. That's incredible. That, I've, never, that's really I've cool. never seen that. I've never even seen that before. I think that would be a great plug-in for uh, WordPress. That's incredible. That, 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 you know, remember that show in the, in the 80s? That's, because because what, what Google is now doing is saying, look, Google, I, Google says, I think that this snippet, first of all, is the intent to this search best, the best intent, plus these images are probably a good preview of what to expect. And then if that wasn't enough, 
it tells you this is why I think that because here's the here's the thing in the middle of this thing that's that's extraordinary and I say that because this is above elegant themes own content and this Divi soup which we found and a bunch of elegant themes so 360 Brad obviously is doing something very right for this particular search phrase yeah he definitely found that this was a the way, problem this snippet I don't think it will keep showing again for the same one like if you do another search uh, Google will bring another type of snippet, I believe. You mean it's going to bring up something different for me? Uh, yeah, I, uh, that's what Change I Change pages Change. to resource. And but, see but, it by the way, I... I well, this is a Bing uh, search. I was just going to say, by the way, I'm not even using Google here, okay? <laughs> that's why it's... Uh, I'm using Bing. Yeah, why are you using Bing? Actually, on purpose, because I want to actually trick people. Because people think that the, Bing and Google are completely interchangeable now, as far as I'm concerned. The only mm. thing that's the, the one thing that is quite bit, a bit different with Bing, I found, is that Go, it, they don't push their stuff above everyone else's like Google does. Google pushes my business and their ads and a bunch of stuff above. So I actually find Bing, I don't know if they're more privacy aware or not, but I find Bing, Bing is actually equivalent and less noise than Google now, believe it or not. It does everything that, that Google, as far as I'm concerned, it does everything Google does. Um, and, and sometimes even better. So here's an example of where, yeah, you're right. I did this export pages and it didn't, didn't show that snippet anymore. Why don't yeah. you go to Google and put in those words and see what happens? Okay. Mm. So now here, so here they're saying, you know what? Elegant themes builds Divi. So why are we showing 360 Brad? This is interesting, right? Divi soup is here, but 360 Brad is not. I never visited that website before. So something, 360 Brad obviously did something to game Bing to, in, a, in a better way, right? Actually, the, the, the fact that the non-branded content appears beforehand is quite, I, in my experience, quite common on Google. Mm -hmm. I, I never, I use Bing at least, you know, one-tenth of one percent of the time. Mm -hmm. so There's I can't that recall. guy, that guy, the YouTube, that stream, oh no, the other girl was looking. He's a pretty common. Did he you know, here? Well, actually, it is elegant. He, he works for elegant themes. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. You would think that. So that basically, Google thinks that this particular page is really the only answers are coming from elegant themes, except for Divi Soup. So Divi Soup. Now, Divi Soup probably is good because this is a typical repository. This is a wiki, basically, almost. And so they have probably very good content. They've built up really good SEO. And um, they they're doing something right too because they, they've been found. But again, if you just search Divi, I doubt you're going to find Divi soup. If you're just going to search a very generic phrase, I seriously doubt you're just going to find anything about them. It's the, because what about Divi help? Well, Divi see, help. like Elegant Themes is pretty much every link. They've yeah. really stuffed. Oh, there's that guy. Oh, you've got, here's a Divi cake here. But they've pretty much stuffed the top, the top search results on the first page. As you would expect, they've probably oh. spent thousands of dollars on doing that. That's like kind of annoying to me because that's the first thing I looked at already, right? Elegant. That's, that that is true. That is true. So that's kind of use, useless to me. And I find with Google, you always have to scroll down now to get what's useful. <laughs> so here's here is uh, here's here's the uh, here's the uh, Divi on Bing, and it's it's <laughs> yeah. You see, they're not they're. Their algorithm is probably not as smart because here there's nothing to do with Divi. My intent here is Divi, but they figure, well, maybe you're looking at something called the Divi project and maybe you're looking for Divi. So this is actually less intelligent, I guess, right? It's also, it also illustrates the problem of if you're privacy conscious and you don't want a vast sort of library of data about yourself, you do restrict or limit uh, the relevance of search engine results because, uh, you know, they would obviously know for a group of us as individuals, we're all WordPress uh, oriented and therefore Divi should be showing as the theme if that search engine knows, Alex, your background, which it should if you search, you know, once a day even that little. But, um, well, you don't want to be retargeted to death, right? And here, yeah. So and here's I, I have like, I use DuckDuckGo when I don't want anybody or I don't want my data collected. What's that? Uh, duck, duck, and then I, if I'm getting serious about something, privacy-wise, I go to Brave, which is a 
Chrome version with even higher levels of privacy. And then there's a final one, which is the uh, Tor browser, oh, which is like totally that? private, mm -hmm. um, but rather limited in its capabilities as a result. DuckDuckGo actually brought up a vulnerability in Divi, which the other two did not on the first page. Interesting. That, that's a more honest result, right? Well, mind. you know, it does use the, it uses um, um, Google, or uh, maybe it's Bing, but one of those two as its search engine provider, okay. as its data provider, and then it massages the results to some limited extent on top of that. I see. But I, I'm not really logged in here, so it really doesn't know who the heck I am. Yeah, and so that's probably why you're getting Divi unrelated to WordPress, uh -huh. is that it doesn't know who you are or what your interests are. And there's no, and there's no way to log in DuckDuckGo, it doesn't seem, right? Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's okay, guys, I got a split. All right. Yeah. I'm it's been fun. Alex, do remember that chat window thing. You got it, my friend. Who's doing Thank the meeting all. notes? Alex, and Robin, who's doing the meeting notes? Uh, Robin does the meeting notes. I do the video. I upload it. He puts it together. And then we Robin, uh, may I ask if you leave the website out when you talk about me? Uh, okay. Sure. Yeah. So you can oh, Heather, it. right? But it's okay. Heather it's M? In the meeting yeah. notes, but it's in the video, though, Heather. That's okay. 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 Who's gonna? How many people do you see watching the video? Thousands. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. Actually, that that actually is an interesting point. There, I shouldn't have asked so many questions then, and I actually had quite a few. Um, no, I, I think the number of people who use the video is fairly limited, and I think they use it for tracking something out of the notes rather than watching it just for the fun of it, because I think it would be pretty boring if you just watched the video alone. Yeah. So that I means mean, what do you think? I just <laughs> want to be, Robin, I just want to be clear, because I just saved the chat. There's going to be another chat that you're going to populate with all that stuff that you wanted, you said you were going to put in? Normally we get a, the transcript of the chat, the text in the chat window, we grab as a whole chunk and put it into the, 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 the recap. Okay, because you, I don't think you put those um, those URLs in it or those um, the the YouTube channels. In. No, so, not yet, because uh, I don't I don't use the chat window for that because I'm making the notes for the post as I go. I meant okay, so I have to look for the post to get those right. Right, okay. I'm showing last month's post, and I'm going to get that on the site on the the meeting on WP site. Toronto. Yeah, Robin does okay. an incredible job of putting this together. He Thank you, Robin. Yeah, I just I don't know the protocols. Actually, you know, Alex, it might be fun uh, if next if in the next month I actually use that duplicate plugin to create a reusable template. Sure. The template's there. It's just that you have to manually know how to put it. You know, the replace the content to produce mm. it. Mm. But it would be a good exercise in showing how content develops as you work with it over a period of time. So mm -hmm. when you look at four posts, you see a pretty ordinary, pretty basic, pretty no frills sort of starting level. Mm -hmm. And then sort of incrementally, it becomes better organized, more structured, more sections, more personality, better writing quality, uh, linking within and so on. And that pe people should understand that that's how quality content arises is that you, through a succession of iterations for sure for you sure. improve it and uh, you ent eventually end up with something that's really good but you didn't get there in the first day you got the there after 10 the search engine optimization probably right. is included all the time right i actually have done that several times with uh when i've written something fairly substantial say twenty thousand words or more and it's evolved over a period of maybe a month or two so I kept sort of stage one, which was two pages long. And then I kept stage two, which was 20 pages long. And then I kept stage three, which is 200 pages long. And yeah. you can sort of see how the thing kind of works itself out in an organic kind of way. And then finally ends up being virtually an application. The subject matter is a particular topic of content mm -hmm. or business or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very much so. Yeah, I don't even know what our analytics looks like. So I should probably install it and we'll see like actually if we uh if we're gonna start getting more um uh traffic on here. I'm not sure if the analytics has been ever installed on this WP Toronto site actually. So all right folks, have Bye. a good night. Bye. We will talk Thank again. you all. This is great. Uh, this is great. Really good. Bye now. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.